Abatacola and Ferrari discuss everything with Matt Abatacola. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. I'm sorry, I ruined your New Year's Eve party. She tastes like cigarettes. And Jason Ferrari. I'm very important. Uh, I have many leather-bound books and my apartment smells of rich mahogany. Hallelujah! Holy shit! Where's the Tylenol? Two complete nincompoops with microphones and access to the World Wide Web. Presented by Mickey Finn's Brewery in Libertyville, Lake County's oldest brew pub. Now, here are your hosts for this shit show, Abatacola and Ferrari. Hello there, podcast friends, and welcome to another episode of Abatacola Ferrari Discuss Everything. This is episode 17, Wild Pansy. He's Ferrari. I'm Abatacola. We're brought to you by Mickey Finn's, Lake County's oldest brew pub, located 345 North Milwaukee Avenue in beautiful downtown Libertyville. You can follow them on Twitter at Mickey Finn's. That's where you can find the show as well, at AFDE Show right there on Twitter. You can connect on Facebook at facebook.com slash AFDE Show. And you can email us anytime at uh, AFDE Show at Gmail. Dot com. Uh, we are both suffering through the uh, early winter, well, actually late fall, early winter uh, colds, uh, the kind that start in the chest that end up in the uh, the sinuses, and they make you sound lovely. Uh, you cough up stuff that you wonder if uh, if you're dying or what that's going on, <laughs> different shades of greens and browns. You've and just drank a, reds. Booger, a booger milkshake. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been fun dealing with that all week, so... Here it is for us on, uh, where are we at now? We are on December 10th. Is it Sunday, yeah, December 10th? It's, it's uh, my mom's birthday. So oh, it I, is? I decided oh. not to call her at like 8 a.m. You should have. Uh, no, I will be calling her. Well, happy birthday, Corinne. Yep. Happy birthday, happy birthday mom. mom. Yeah, there you go. Nice. She'll probably listen to this in about three months. Right. So like, uh, at least she'll feel good and hear it again. Wait, if you, you shouldn't call her. Then she could get mad at you for not remembering her birthday. She'd and then like, she can, No, I have it recorded. When she listened to this in July, she'll be like, <laughs> oh, he did remember my birthday. He's so sweet. Yeah. Anywho, I uh, hope you're having a, uh, a great, uh, great week or a great start to your week as uh, you're listening to episode 17, Wild Pansy. Uh, lots of great stuff going on in the world of politics. I want to give a, a great a, a, a brief recap just to uh, <laughs> highlight where our country has been this past week. Um, my favorite thing of this week was uh, Donald Trump Jr., Don Jr., uh, testifying, and uh, he refused to answer questions about a conversation he had with his dad about the meetings he had with Russian officials claiming uh, client attorney privilege despite the fact that he and his father, neither one of them, are lawyers. So really, it's, he's, a, he's a special kind of stupid, which is great. Uh, I love seeing him defend his father on Twitter. It's very entertaining. Uh, Don Jr. is a really good follow because he, he really is one of the least bright people in America. Both uh, of them. Well, yeah. I mean, Eric isn't as active oh on my, social, well, but he's... Yeah. I, that guy I, needs a... Well, Eric, Eric is taking, a kind of a, think, he's taking a, a back, back seat to things. As the administration has moved forward, almost almost a year now, you don't really see or hear Eric and and, and Laura Trump very much. Well, uh, you haven't have Don Junior though. You haven't been keeping right an there. eye on SNL at all, have you? I, I haven't. I haven't watched the last couple weekends. The uh, the Donald Trump Junior and Eric stuff that they do, where they come on the news and like Eric, they just make him. You know, it's kind of like S in SNL style, like whoever's the dumber of a pair yeah. that come into like Weekend Update, they make him like really dumb. Okay. So Don Jr. will be <laughs> will be like, uh, like Eric will be like, think of multiplicity and like the fourth one that's made where the guy's like, I got a wallet. <laughs> that guy gave it to me. So they'll make him like that character. Okay. And then Don Jr. will be like. Don't worry, Eric. You give him like a sucker, or yeah. like give him something to play with. Oh, <laughs> like, wow. It's so bad, but it's so funny. So that was great. But the the whole uh, uh, client attorney privilege thing was just spectacular. And then uh, Sarah Huckabee in front of the media was asked about that, and he's like, "How can um, John Carl from ABC was like, how can they claim that when neither one are lawyers?" And she's like, "Oh, you'll have to address that with Don Jr.'s lawyers, yeah, because that's that's what they'll answer that." I'm like, "Wow." So it just keeps getting better and better each week. And then uh, we've had um, Trent Franks, senator from Arizona, resign. Uh, Al Franken did resign this past week. Uh, we knew John Connors was resigning. Um, the stuff down to Alabama, the election, I believe, is Tuesday. So that's in two days. Uh, Roy Moore has the full endorsement and support of President Trump now, which is uh, spectacular. 
Uh, he has gone into hiding because he know he no longer needs to be in the public eye with with uh, the endorsement from Trump and other Republican leaders, who uh, you know two weeks ago wanted Roy Moore to uh, to step away from politics. Now they're supporting him. Uh, and there, the, my favorite my favorite answer to all this is you know how can you go from two weeks ago telling him he should step away, even though they are allegations, uh, to now supporting him? And I've seen Mitch McConnell say, well, we'll let the people in Alabama decide. Yeah, there you go. That's that's just a good way to to not answer anything. Uh, Doug Davis, though, I guess it's a, it's apparently a very close race, so we'll see what happens down there. If a uh, a child pedophile and sexual assault uh, allegations are going to derail Roy Moore's career or not, we'll see if that happens. So it's been a pretty spectacular week in our I politics. Always, I always wonder, <clears throat> like seriously, wonder um, what's happening internally. Like, I politics seems like it's so driven by something inside the system you know i mean like what what's causing the flip-flopping within such a short period of time on both sides of the aisle i mean there are some democrats who are like oh eh, you know just let the process play out but they're completely you know against it but what's happening internally you know is someone well i don't know because tightening I, I, the strings because I, I, I don't, who gives a shit what trump says one way or the other i, I, just, I don't know it just i mean they have to be motivated there's there's political financial and power motivation that's what it has to be and the, the That's people what I mean, like, the, what's the financial upside of this? Well, it's it's the people that support these 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 people in office right now, and the people that are, that are in in leadership in our country right now. They're supported by big money, and right. and it's the big money that doesn't care if so you know if, if women come forward from forty years ago. Party so first, guy, regardless of right. It's not even party. It it's it's what their personal agenda might be, and how how it benefits them personally. Right. That's what I mean. It's yeah, what, yeah. So I'm always that's wondering. That's all it is. I mean, dude, look at it. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when the same political leaders that are now dancing behind Donald Trump didn't want him oh, yeah. as their as their candidate for oh, a president. Yeah. They change opinions daily, right? So now it's just okay. Well, I'm you know I can't beat the system, so I'm going to just get in line and join it. That's really what it comes down to, uh, and that's really what's sad about it. Uh, another big highlight this week is President Trump um, officially recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of, of Israel. Uh, and, you know, he's he's going on how other his predecessors, you know, said it and wouldn't do it. And, I, you know, I'm the guy that delivers and I do and I and I've done it. Well, yeah, you know, every president before him, uh, you look at, 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 at W, at Clinton, at Obama. They all said it was the right thing to do. But in the end, they never did it because of the to the turmoil and violence it would create, which we've seen now this week. So I, you know, I don't know how you're going to try to bring peace to the Middle East by doing that. That's why other presidents who actually have a functioning adult brain didn't actually do what Donald Trump did this week. I don't. It's, think it's, it's not. A, it's not an honor. It's not a recognition to say, "Man, look at me! Pat myself on the back. I finally did it." It wasn't the right thing to do. And I get this idiot on Twitter the other day who tries to, you know, who tries to pull the biblical aspect of it towards me and says, "You know what Donald Trump did was just basically what this guy said." And I'll paraphrase his tweets were. Donald Trump was was basically just following through biblical prophecy with that you know the God said Israel is his chosen people's land and it's for the Jews and that's Jerusalem's the capital and that's where you know that's where they're supposed to be and I'm like you really believe that Donald Trump was fulfilling biblical prophecy by doing this I'm like you are the dumbest human being on Twitter and there's a lot of them and mm -hmm. first of all don't come at me with like the biblical knowledge stuff cuz I yeah I've forgotten more than you than you know but but to think that Donald Trump did it because of biblical prophecy come on don't, don't, okay, let's let's compare it. Donald Trump doing it for biblical prophecy, or Donald Trump hates Muslims and will do anything to derail any kind of Muslim Muslim uh, thought, uh, lifestyle, belief, anything uh, to be hate, ha hateful towards Muslims. I think hmm. there's a, let's let's balance those out. A solid mm. <clears throat> damn man. There's a solid three option too. He doesn't know anything about anything. Like of all the things this guy doesn't know about, there's he does not. He doesn't know be, anything. About anything. Begin to understand the hornet's nest that is that right. topic. Right. I mean, that is older than anything like any of us have any grasp oh, but, of but whatsoever. You know, you know who his front man on this whole you know piece in the Middle East thing was? Was his son-in-law, Jared Kushner. Mm -hmm. And what is he? How old is he? He's got 30s. 30s, and, and his background is in Middle East relations. Yeah. And he, right? I, well, I think his that his, being Jewish might be his background. I think, I think you just wrote his campaign slogan for 2020. He doesn't know anything about anything. Yeah, Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Yeah, and he would somehow find a way to spin that into a positive for him. Yeah. I'm the best ever at not doing anything right. about anything. If anybody you know, doesn't know anything about anything, it's me. I mean, it's been almost a year since he's taken office. He spent, you know, half his time at his resorts, you know, half the time in the White House. The guy is just a complete disgrace and a buffoon. 
Um, but I, I love how he's patting himself on the back for you know the whole Jerusalem thing. It's like, dude, it was not the right thing to do. I mean, if you really want to bring peace, every every other political leader in the country or in the world, I mean, has come out and said this was not the right thing to do. The Pope has even said it's not the right thing to do. You know, UN officials have come out and said this is not the right thing to do. Every other of our uh, uh, ally in the Middle East, Muslim allies, have come out and said, yeah, this is not the right thing to do. I mean, I don't think it's ever going to, you know, it's 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 never going to be fixed, no matter what you come out and say publicly. I mean, what that'd be like um, me being completely broke and then waking up tomorrow and be like, I refuse to be broke even though I'm broke. Right. Uh, because I said I'm not. Like, it's pretty much what it no. is. No, I mean, the guy just says things. He tweets things. It doesn't make them <laughs> right, and it definitely doesn't make them beneficial. Right. So that was a, a pretty spectacular week as far as uh, the political landscape in our country is concerned. Um, you know, he's still going off and tweeting about fake news and CNN. It's just, it's, oh, got, uh, it's gotten so tiresome. I didn't read the article yet, but right before you got here this morning, I was uh, looking at um, just headlines and saw the one where he's like asking for the Washington Post reporter to be fired. It's oh, like, yeah. Clearly, hey, in, in the in the uh, in the scope of not knowing anything about anything, he's just really, really not big uh, and up on the uh, Amendment one, the one right, bef- you know, like, right. right before the Second Amendment. So right. Which they misinterpret over and over oh, and over again. This is episode 17. Wild Pansy AFDE show. We uh, talk about everything. He's Ferrari. I'm a bad cola. We're recording at 8 a.m. on a Sunday. Yeah, morning. no, like, Sunday morning. We're taking a little different spin on things. It was a, a difficult week uh, to record at night just with dealing with this stupid colds and uh, sounding like crap and wanting to die. So this I is, think at one point we both sounded like, well, I'll, I'll, let me think, what's a fair It was Friday. 12-year-old like tw- girls? Yeah, like, Friday was bad. That phone conversation was, I wish we could have like recorded that. Sound, you're not sounding like yourself. I'm like, I don't know what, what this <laughs> yeah, is. Then, yeah, you kept doing a, was it, was it Bobby Brady or was it, oh, yeah. you kept, yeah, the squeak, yeah, the squeak kept happening. <laughs> it was good. We should have recorded that phone call. Um, here's a question for you, because yeah, as far as technology is concerned, you know, we we walk around every day with these super powerful computers in our hand. Um, I mean, we have we've sent uh, cameras to uh, Mars. We have had you know men walk on on, on the moon. Uh, people live in space stations for you know years at a time. Uh, technology is really really spectacular in this country. Here, here's a question for you though. When you go to pump gas, and sometimes you prepay, sometimes you just throw your card in. Had I, I ran in today, I had cash on me, which I generally don't. I prepaid for my gas, so I ran in, gave the, the woman twenty bucks, and uh, go back out. Why, why can't we make it where the pump slows down closer to your final destination than like thirty seconds out or thirty cents out, especially like on, when it's cold like yeah. this? And like, and so I put in, I put in twenty bucks, and it hits nineteen eighty, and then it's like nineteen eighty. 1981, 1982. All of a sudden, the technology becomes the year. Right. It's like 1980. 1980. <laughs> Someone's in there just like cranking it. There's like a gerbil in a wheel. Like, can, oh, we're almost there. Can we make it slow down five sec- five cents out maybe? Or maybe even three cents out? I mean, do we have the technology to do that? We can send dr- people to Mars. It's like a dramatic countdown. <laughs> yeah. And you're just sitting I'm just like, like, I'm at a point this morning. I was like, all right, I just might screw this last 15 God, cents. Damn, the like, space uh, launch is, qu- is right. faster than this. I'm like, I don't really care about 15 cents anymore at this point. It's too damn cold or, to stand here. Or how about the amount of, uh, I don't know what it is lately, but the amount of clicks where it's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Now and then, like, and then mo- finally it'll be like, it'll start going. You're like, all right, turn around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, like most pumps, you can't like put them in the, the lock position yeah. and walk away from it because it, it'll go for 10 cents yeah. and then it, it kicks out. <laughs> like, oh, seriously? We're going backwards. So you got to sit out there and hold it. But yeah, so maybe if there's someone out there listening to this podcast that has anything to do with the. Gas station I actually industry. Hope someone, no, but just like the gas station industry. If you could maybe correct this issue <laughs> and make it where it slows down at like three cents out of your final destination, maybe that would be great. Or at least make it like you know, make it worth our while. I don't know, maybe it's a slot machine or right. something. Like what one of the ticks get, sends out some cash. Right. You know, some coins fall out of the out of the pump that you're at. I mean, oh hey, you well, got that'd a be even more hilarious. You're standing there already irritated. And there's change all over the ground. <laughs> Under the car, it's in that cold, like icy, slushy kind of oh, thing. To pick yeah, it up. it's like half gasoline. So if we could take care of that. I would really appreciate someone doing that because uh, it's just it's fine in the summertime, but in the winter, it's just it's dumb to watch it count down so slow. Um, oh, I got a question for you too because I know you've 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 done this before, but only because you've had back issues. Uh, where sleeping on the floor was the only good option for you at uh, times. Yeah, with with uh, like my leg up on yeah. a chair or something. Okay. Help me out with this because uh, ever since my I, I got a roommate back in September, 
um, you know, I, I gave her my bed, my bedroom. I have a pull-out bed, and, you know, the boys have their own beds. And so I, they have their own room. My mom has her own room. And when the boys are over, you know, the three or four nights a week that they're over, I was like, all right, I'll just sleep on the pull-out bed when they're, when they're over. So one night, Hank was like, oh, can you sleep in our room on the floor by our beds? And I'm like, yeah, whatever, I can do that. And I slept great that night. And then I did it again, and I did it again, and then every time they sleep over, I always sleep on the floor, and I, I sleep great on the floor. Yeah. I sleep on the pull-up bed, I feel terrible. I sleep on the couch, I feel terrible when I wake up. I sleep on the floor. Now I'm at a point where I'm sleeping on the floor even when they're not there. Like last night, boys weren't, they, weren't, they didn't sleep over. I slept on the floor in their room because I sleep the best. It's yeah. the most comfortable. Like I wake up feeling refreshed. I don't, I'm not stiff or sore anywhere. I, I I don't know how to explain it or why I sleep so good on the floor. People think I'm crazy. Well, it, I'd like say, I, I've talked, uh, Jen and I are talking about it. And I'm like, oh, I sleep on the floor, and she's like, I, it's bizarre to me. She goes, this the thought of you sleeping on the floor makes my body hurt. She's like, I wouldn't last five minutes. And I'm like, I I sleep great on the floor. Well, I feel like in uh, in comparison to a good mattress, you know, it's it could be go one way or the other. But I'm I'm almost positive that every single um, pull-out mattress on a couch uh, they channel all of the like the, the evil across the world and just put it into the springs in one of those. Like well, I would I, definitely I, I even, sleep on a floor yeah, like, better I, than on a pull-out mattress. I paid like an extra hundred bucks when I got the couch for the different mat, like an upgraded mat. You can upgrade mattresses now, like to foam or something. Yeah, it's like, like a memory that. foam thing. And I like you know in the store I'm like yeah this is actually a lot more comfortable than I remember. Uh, a pull-out mattress oh, ever wake being. up with a spring up but your it was ass. not <laughs> even a, yeah but no now it's like the just the metal bar is like somewhere in the small of your back or yeah. in your neck or depending so i mean it's just it's brutal but i sleep great on the floor now i don't know how to explain it no i spent many nights doing that but just because i need well you needed to yeah yeah i'm doing it because i'm choosing to which sounds dumb well no whatever whatever's making whatever makes you sleep better <clears throat> ride that out ride that out for as long as it lasts because that sleep has always been a bit a big problem for me. So <laughs> if something is working for you, just keep doing it, it. What's great too is I have two box fans now and I have one that's like five inches above my head and like one that's five inches below say, my feet. You, you're, you're sleeping with them like headphones. So I'm like in a wind tunnel of just, just constantly battling each other and I'm in the middle of it. It's great. Well, the box fan clearly gives you peace. Oh, I need that sound. I can't sleep without that, that box fan sound. I've been sleeping with a fan since I was in middle school. Yep. Well, whatever works. I mean, that's how I spent my train rides going home. You know, that's that. what I was gonna. Say. That's why yeah. I said like yeah. Fox fans are your. That's your Zen place. That's what I. Yeah, that's what I would uh, tune out of, uh, out of the station, get in the train, put headphones on, listen to uh, box fan noise for an hour and ten minutes on the train. A lot of times, I'd probably rather listen to that anyway than whatever moron gets on the metro or or sports talk for that matter. Hmm. Um, I was hanging out with my mom yesterday for a little bit, and uh, this is this is great. Do you, do you, like you know the story behind your parents meeting and how that all went down? Uh, yeah. I, I, kind of i always forget i i didn't know and then my mom told me yesterday about uh my parents meeting they met in the army and uh, i think i think she said she was down in texas they were stationed out in texas and uh she said she never went out and never really did anything and then my dad apparently never went out never really did anything uh, when they had free time so his buddy who his best friend in the army his name was charlie brown and i guess my mom her really good friend knew Charlie or they were Charlie and her best friend were dating was the teacher right wah, 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 wah. <laughs> that's how she would talk and uh so they both were like hey you know I I you know my, my, my buddy doesn't do anything your your girlfriend doesn't do anything we should get them to go out so my <laughs> parents could hooked up, do nothing together. right my parents could hooked up on a on a blind double date all right so she says my dad's driving she's in the front seat and the other couple's in the back seat and they're driving and my mom doesn't know where they're where they're going and they stop apparently there was there, there was a dance that night on the, on the base Okay. But they pick the girls up and they drive and she's like, I don't know where we're going. And they go in a, like to a gas station and they get a six pack of beer. So they get the boys get back in the car. They got a six pack of beer and they're driving. My mom has no idea where they're going. They ended up in this like this area, like this wooded area with like a lake <laughs> like, and wait, whatnot. Like lovers land. Yeah, it's like whatever. Inspiration yeah. Point or something. <laughs> yeah. So my mom's like, what the heck are we doing here? And so then my dad cracks open a beer and hands her one. And she's like, oh, I don't, I don't drink. And I guess my dad got super irritated. And I guess he like chucked he like chucked his out, out the window and he started the car up and he's like all right we'll we'll go back to the dance now so he goes back to the dance on base and he pulls up to the front and they tell the girls they're like all right you guys get out we're gonna park 
go to the bathroom. We'll come and find you. So the girls get out. They go into the Just dance. Bailed. And they bail. They Houdini on them. <laughs> so my, my dad didn't get any action on their first blind double date. So he ditches her at a dance. And he wasted a beer. Wasted two. She opened, he opened one for her and she didn't drink. So he, he threw, threw his out the, out window the window and he got ticked. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, well, that was a great start. I go, so. A six pack for four people. Too, yeah. I'm like, how did you end up getting married and having, having five kids then? How does, how does that all work out? She's like, well, she goes, that there was this uh, paratrooper that kept asking me out and I kept telling him no. And so she goes, I, uh, I decided to say yes to him just to spite your father. So she goes, we were out and him and I were dancing and your father was there. And she was, I remember he was wearing this red shirt and he was there and he saw me dancing with this. He was really tall and blonde. He was really handsome, Matthew. That's what my mom's saying. I'm like, yeah, whatever. And she goes, my dad, she goes, your dad looked really sad and started to leave. And I, then I felt bad. So then I left the guy I was dancing with and went and grabbed your dad. And then we started talking again. And that was it. She goes, then we went out again. And so the rest is history. They got married and have five Abatacola boys. So <laughs> dad's a giant cock blacker. <laughs> No, he's a sore loser. Oh, yeah, I know, but he totally cock blocked <laughs> right. that guy. Yeah, I guess, you know. The very looking... handsome, tall blonde right. just got ditched <laughs> right. for the sulking guy with the can of beer in the corner. I was like, Mom, I don't like, maybe my life would have been different if I had a different dad. I mean, why didn't you stay with the paratrooper? Uh, yeah, so then she chased yeah, you, after you him. You look and... like Dolph Lundgren. And yeah, maybe you're just a, <laughs> a Drago. <laughs> yeah, you do that look. Speaking of which, um, have you... And I, I can't even believe I'm saying this and not joking. Have you seen the the uh, plot for Creed 2? Does he fight Drago's kid? No. Drago. No. Get out. I am not kidding. Dolph Lundgren has been cast, and he is fighting a 60-year-old Russian. But he's not Russian for real, but they're fighting. Why? To avenge his father's death. I am not joking. See, wouldn't it be better if he fought Drago's kid? Yeah, but and we're, kills we're, his we're kid. Assu- I mean, we're assuming that Drago is is a human man and not a robot and right. can actually procreate. But yeah, someone told me it uh, the other that. day, and I wow. said, "There's no way that's true." And then I looked it up, and it's like Creed two, K- Dolph Lundgren casts at, cast, and then that's like there's I don't know if they please tell me that it's going to be filmed like in Russia and like at one of the fight scenes, there's like a suite. Like overlooking the the boxing match and and it's like there's Kushner and Trump and Don Jr. and oh. Putin. <laughs> well, they have to. I mean, in typical Jeff fashion, Sessions they'll and... have to uh, create like like characters, right? You know, like it'll be like Gorbachev like, like was the Gorbachev, in, in the Drago yeah, the, one, Gorbach- yeah. the the kind of Gorbachev yeah. guy in it. That so they could do a kind of Putin guy, kind of Trump guy, but yeah. you need a kind of Kushner, kind of Don. And they've got to do like the SNL Putin, where he's standing there without a shirt. Yes. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. Hundred percent. He's on a horse without a shirt while the fight's going. And they have out. like a, a somewhat similar Eric Trump character, like just eating cotton candy and yeah. a big lolly, like one of those giant, well, every like time he multicolored tries to do spiral something. lollipops. Yes, the, yeah, they just keep handing him something to distract him. Yeah, it's an actual baby bottle with like whiskey in it. <laughs> God, uh, yeah. So uh, that, that well, that sounds that's terrible. happening, and that's too bad too because that first one was great. I thought it was a really good movie. Right. I've watched uh, uh, Michael B. Jordan was fantastic in it. You know, I thought it was just uh, really well written and acted. I thought it was good. That sounds terrible to me, though. Oh, it's comical. Like, oh my! And the funny thing is, you know that this, it, he's sixty. Sixty-year-old Dolph Lundgren is in better shape than like most people we know. Right. Definitely me. Well, I mean, <laughs> all those horse steroids he takes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the movie. Uh, din, din, well, yeah, din, that's din, that's din, very din, disappointing. Din, 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 uh, you're you're not a Star Wars guy at all, so that the this Friday coming up, no big deal to you. Me? Yeah, what? I love Star Wars. Oh, you do? I probably. Oh, you I'm not like going to go. No, I went. My my parents took me to all of them when I was a kid. <laughs> Loved them. I had all the action figures and stuff. Okay, I, I went and saw. Oh, I thought different. The, um, I didn't rush out to see Rogue One, which I still think was kind of, <laughs> but uh, I definitely went and saw. Um, the, oh, Rogue One's the the, the prequel of yeah, all the yeah, Star Wars. Yeah. It was movie. all right. Yeah, no, I thought it was good. I thought it was decent. Yeah. I, I, not a theater going. It's on type Netflix. Movie. I yeah. gave it. A, I gave it a second shot. It's yeah. okay, but I mean the the uh, Force was, Awakens. Did you that? I thought was awesome. Yeah, that was great. Like they did a great job, and I'm like super pumped for like I'm just not going to be there like on the 15th, but I will go see it. I was thinking maybe going to see it on like Christmas or something. I think I'm going to go Saturday and see it. Uh, Saturday early. Uh, taking the kids, uh, Abigail's going to be over for the weekend, or at least Friday night, Saturday. We're going to go see Ferdinand. 
Remember the kids' book, Ferdinand, about yeah. the, the bull, Ferdinand? They, they had, there's a movie coming out Friday night, uh, Ferdinand the Bull, so we're going to go see that Saturday morning. And I think, I'm, I think I might go see Star Wars Saturday night. I think I'm going to go do uh, a couple couple movies on, on one day. Remember, um, I think the only reason this is fresh in my mind is because I watched The Blind Side not too long ago. It was on, like, Spike or something. It's a good movie. But, yeah, but Ferdinand is the book yeah, that she, that, reads. That she yeah. reads to him. Yeah, and, and I've read kids. it to the, the boys tons of times. Yeah, it's a, yeah I love, the, I love the, 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 the book. It's a great, great book, great story, uh, great, you know, meaning behind it. And when I saw they were making a movie, I'm like, cool, can't wait to go see that. And it comes out the same day as Star Wars, and uh, we'll go see Ferdinand probably at the cheap show right in town, and then I'll go to uh, one of the nice theaters, and I'll uh, treat myself <laughs> later on that night. Yeah, I'll, Star Wars. I'll, I'll go probably before or right around right around Christmas. I just don't like, I mean, short of uh, seeing, like, the the people who still live with their parents, you know, like, dressed in full costume yeah. might, might be enticing, but... Well, when the uh, when I'm, this, I'm good with take like waiting a week. When the second series came out, uh, when episodes one, two, and three came out, I went. I, I don't know if I saw all three or two of the three with oh, uh, with like, Berticelli. Yeah. And when yeah, when actual episodes one, two, and three were right. released, it was at two thousand one, two, three area yeah, right with, there. Uh, annoying what Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, guy. we went to you know he would get tickets for the midnight shows, and so we we would go to those. And uh, I mean, people were you know dressed up in full costume, and I was like, "This is, this is horrific, uh, and terribly embarrassing." But that was the time when I was, I, I don't know, uh, no, was not in school. It was after school, so I was either, yes, yeah, so I was working the morning show, and then waiting tables and bartending at night. And I so I was getting off like you know waiting tables at like ten o'clock at night, eleven o'clock at night, and then going to a midnight show. Yeah, no, I remember watching that movie that. and then yeah, going and then going right to the station. Brian's like a. Oh, it's giant crazy sci-fi diehard. Dork. Well, yeah. this is the Star Wars stuff. I mean, yeah. he had every you know every line was memorized, and he could recite the whole thing just from memory. But you know, and then we like the movie would get over, and I would leave the movie theater, and then drive right back to the station and work for the day. So I was up for like twenty four hour period just to go hang out with him, seeing these movies. So that probably made me hate the movies even more. You were doing that when we were working at the school. <clears throat> oh, is that what it was? Yeah, because that's why you would because you would go see the movie. You would go work the morning show, and then you would drive oh, right over to the, right and get to, to get to ICB at like 11, noon, noon, yeah, eleven yeah. or something like that. That's right. Yep, that's right. Oh, when we were filling classes up, mm-hmm. when we were putting forty kids in a class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah, and that, and that was uh, justification for relieving me <laughs> of my duties. You, were, you relieved yourself. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, so you know, let, let's since we're talking about movies and stuff, let's just jump right into stuff we've watched, and then we'll we'll talk about the bears. Um, anything, well, anything? Wait, one more thing about the week, though. Uh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, other yeah, than of other than being sick, yeah, and uh, watching stuff that we're going to discuss now. Uh, Trish and I went and got a real tree. Is it your first real tree? Uh, no, no. I mean, like, I've never personally bought a real tree for myself. Right. I have. My parents have bought them, but they're such a pain. I hate them. So they have now. You know, you've seen my parents' tree. It's like what the hell? I don't know. Twelve feet it's tall. At least twelve feet. Yeah. And and now it's pre lit because I don't. You know, my dad would probably go out and murder somebody if he had to deal with that ever again. But uh, yeah, <laughs> you know, with Corinne standing there just yelling at him while he's trying to light a twelve foot tree, right. or probably taller. Literally light it though. <clears throat> yeah, light it on fire and then himself. There you, there you go, Corinne. <laughs> just, just just go out in a blaze of glory. Why are you using gasoline on the fire? <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking. Because uh, he's drinking. But it? yeah, so we went out and uh, went to a couple different places, and we knew like the the room we had to work with. Um, like <laughs> not a lot of room and we yeah. managed to find one that that no, fits in it and it's, it's nice um i don't know if you saw um on facebook the other night though but uh trish was like i was she was i don't know she had this look like the the tree just wasn't enough so i went onto uh netflix and opened up one of those fireplace things yeah and then she's like, oh, that's a great idea. So she's like, I lit, I decorated the tree and Jason lit the fire. It was, yeah. So nice. Yeah. But uh, that's it. Now we can go into things we watched this week. And yeah. Like, no, you know, I got a, I got a fake tree. Uh, we did it last weekend, me and the kids and uh, Abby and the boys decorated it. They did a really nice job, but I just, it I'm, looks really good. Yeah. I bought one with the lights already on it because I wasn't going to deal with string of lights and no. Man, it looks it's a great yeah. It's, got, like, it's a seven footer. I was gonna say if, if you would have let me know, I have a six foot pre lit tree that's just sitting in storage because well now we I have had one to have a real one in yeah. storage, and we bought all the different ornaments and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I let Hank pick out his own ornament, and the uh, and then Rex, the rest we just we just got the big package oh, thing. Say who's Rex? And, and uh, <laughs> he he picked out a uh, 
it's a red and silver glittery uh, table saw ornament. Nice. I'm like, what? He's really manning up lately. <laughs> I'm dude. like, why do you want this? He's really manning uh, up. I like, yeah, he, yeah, he really is. At I mean, first, he, we've been joking around for he at walks least, out with a tool belt now. At least a year with. Uh, <laughs> He's he's doing all my DIY projects yeah. at home. No, but we've been joking around about it for a while where Jack just is more like he's more of like kind of, you know, like like a hardened kind of like kid, yeah. whereas Jack was a little bit more free spirited. But now Jack's like into sports. Get oh, Hank, 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 sorry, Hank, sorry, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. It's what time is it? But uh, early. Yeah. But uh, no, um, Hank is now starting to watch sports with dad and yelling at the opposing team. Yeah, dude, and we're watching it. Bulls uh, Hornets game the other night and uh, which, you know, the Bulls snapped their 10 game losing streak. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he he is the first basketball game we've ever watched together. He was literally yelling, getting mad to a point where he's almost crying. On every Hornets basket. <laughs> it was like 12 to 6, and he was like almost in tears. And I'm like, dude, it's a long game. There's lots of points. I'm like, just relax. It's okay. But seriously, every point they scored, he would react. If the Bulls scored, he would yell and scream. If the Hornets scored, he would get he would get ticked. And I'm like, you man, I go, you're not going to make an 82-game season. You've, you've got to settle down. <laughs> yeah. Like the playoffs yeah. are going to kill you. You've got to settle down. Ugh. We finished that game. That was over. And what's on now, Daddy? And the Sabres and Blackhawks were, were like in the second period. So I turned that on, and he watched every minute of that until that was over. Why don't they score more? Isn't that what he was yeah. saying? He's like, why do they score more in hockey? I'm like, yeah, that's a great question. Well, yeah, there's a get used to it. There's a lot of back and forth with a lot and of nothing. That, so the Bulls-Hornets game went to overtime. The Blackhawks-Sabres game went into overtime. Uh, Luckily, the Hawks scored with like four seconds left in overtime to end the game, so yeah. they didn't have to go to a shootout. Because then, then I would have been like... Hockey OT is pretty cool. I would have had to explain but you know, late, the shootout. Like playoff OT hockey. Like, oh, yeah, that's the best. I can't I mean, do any... Like, regular season now, they, you know, they go three on three now. Yeah. Great, yeah, so... Get uh, get get Hank into March Madness. He'll probably like... He'll probably, oh, like, his head will explode. Start throwing the tree around. Right. Like, oh, if you have your tree up in March. I'm going to... I think I'm going to... I was debating that last night as I was staring at it and looking at the lights. I was like, maybe I'll just leave this up year round. And I wondered, how dusty does it get? Because I'm not going to clean it. I left... Uh, Year round, I left mine up until at least March at uh, in Madison. Oh, really? Not in, not in our uh, the last apartment, but the one that I was in by myself. Yeah, yeah I, that thing was up till at least late February. Well, I was investigating the storage units in my apartment building to see if there's an empty one because I, I want to see if I can if I can snatch an extra storage unit. So that way I can just I can just move the just entire put tree the, tree the way it is up. <laughs> in storage. So I don't have to break it down and put I, it back in a box like again. A completely reasonable. I would rather I would, I, I'll like I'll put it in I'll cover it in plastic or if that helps to keep dust off or whatever. But just I don't want to break it down. Multiple garbage bags. <laughs> right. I I do not want to break it down and put it back in the box, which will never happen. Because the way it comes, it, it has it, it it's not packaged by human hands. The, no, I mean, yeah. it has to be like you have to like break like it robotically into three done pieces. Well, three the, pieces, but, the but it, like it's cable's so still attached. Yeah, and it's so, but it's so. Uh, I mean, broken down and so smushed that it's like it fits. Like there's no way human hands did that. It's no. definitely machine out. And then getting it back into the box is freaking hysterical. Right. So if the gas station people can take care of that issue, and then the tree people can make it where trees actually go back in the box <laughs> when you after you take them out, that would be great. I would appreciate that. You'll make, you know, what you do those two things, you'll have done more. For me, than uh, President Trump has done. It's not difficult, or will do. No, it's not difficult. Now you just made me think of uh, the uh, I don't know I don't know anything about anything campaign. Twenty twenty. Whereas uh, when, like an attack ad by the Dago Tea Party, where it's just a guy standing out front of a Jules, just just standing there. He doesn't even have to say anything. Just like side by side comparison, and I'd still vote for the Dago Tea guy. Right, probably. <laughs> even if the Dago Tea was like a jewel plastic bag. Uh, all right, oh, so yeah, <laughs> what'd you watch this week? I've I've watched uh, I watched a couple of movies and I th- I can't remember if I told you this new TV show I watched. I started last week or whatever it was. But what did you watch? Uh, well, I um, Matt knows I uh, this is this was my third attempt at watching Kong Skull Island. Uh, first one, I fell asleep five minutes in, woke up and the credits were on. And then the second time I tried to watch it, I woke up a half hour in and was like, "What what's happening?" So clearly it was not something I was into. I forced my way through it. Um, bad, bad movie. Uh, the uh, like I said, the only I mean, it's just you know, it was an action movie, but it was just like the writing was really, really bad. It was corny. I loved um, uh, what is it, John C. John, John C. Riley. Riley's yeah. his, just him. He's hilarious, and everything he said was just super funny. And that was the only thing that got me through it. I just thought it was poor. I liked it. Um, Hank and my mom they watched it a couple weeks ago. 
Hank loved it, of course, and he like he watched it like three days in a row. Uh, my mom hated it. She thought it was terrible. I, I thought it was good. I don't know. I enjoyed it. You know, the whole, you know, uh, God, now I can't remember the actor's name. The In charge of the, the Army guys. Um, Samuel Jackson? Yeah, geez, Sam Jackson. The whole Sam Jackson versus Kong thing was no. kind of... Yeah. Where he's just like standing there and they're yeah. looking into each other's eyes, and like and the whole the whole thing, like the whole forest around him is on fire, and he's yeah, just standing, he's just standing in the there. Of it. That's what I mean. Like, it was whatever. Just really corny. But, yeah, I thought it was fine. I you like. Know, um, I'm easily entertained. So I, I think. Thought it was good. I hope that um, Hiddleston is in more, like Loki from the Avengers movies. Like I just think that's a funny dude. That's that was like the cu- the um, British special service guy that they brought in. Oh. Loki. That's Loki. Yeah. yeah. I really, I think that he's I knew like, I knew that he's guy. a good actor. Like, I'm hoping he's in more. Wow, what a different look. And That's it was great. Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. I would have preferred if he was in his Loki character. It was so, yeah. Oh, that'd be, <laughs> and like that, that big I'd horn, Island, yeah. that big horned helmet. Kong would be like, the hell's up with this what's, guy? Who's this guy? I'm not going to kill him. I don't know. I'm just going to mock him. All right. So you didn't like it. I liked it. So uh, in our movie reviews, it gets a thumbs thumbs up from me, thumbs down right. from Jason. Well, I mean, like, we, like, could, we I, could do that now. Like I said, Is that what Siskel Niebert did? Yeah. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, okay. So Respect. One, one thumbs Respect. up, one thumbs rest, down. Rest in peace, both of you. Uh, Why did you break into... Uh, what is that character? Uh, the one that uh, Sasha Baron Cohen did. Borat? Respect. No, the... Um, uh, shoot. Sasha God, We are so terrible. No, I remember I don't, things. I'm not... I don't know... Remember he did... Uh, oh. Oh, the... Um, the DJ guy, right? yeah, with the, with the goggles. Gosh darn it! I don't. I wasn't really. I've never really been. I've never seen either Borat movie. I've never really been. Oh in, really? I don't really find. I oh, I found him kind of entertaining in uh, <laughs> in uh, Talladega Nights, but otherwise, uh, yeah. We could do that. Okay, yeah, so you did the the respect. You did. You oh, okay. pulled out the whole accent. All right. So thumbs up, thumbs down for Skull Island. Yeah. What else did you watch? Um, I I think uh, if people are gonna start sensing a pattern, but I like to watch things uh, more than once. It's almost like a like a palate cleanser for my brain, you know, like, I, like as I've been going to sleep, uh, this week, I'll throw on just a random episode of like West wing. Okay. Just cause Ollie G. Oh, okay. God bless him. Yeah. My, uh, you know, I, it just, my, I don't, if I start watching something that I haven't seen, my brain will get engaged. And then even if it's crap, yeah, I'll just keep watching it. Right. Um, so like I watch West Wing, but I watch Spotlight again, and I know that the subject oh, matter yeah. is a little, you know, not well, I mean, not good, but it's an excellent movie. Two thumbs up on that one. Yeah, so I watched that, and then um, I attempted the Punisher series on okay. Netflix. I don't know, you know, I I think I'll probably go back to it, um, but I got about three episodes in, and I'm I, I think it's just one of those very slow developing things. Have you watched? I know you were watching it too. Did you get I, further in? I maybe four or five episodes and I haven't gone back to it yet. I just, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't grabbed and just sucked into it. Yeah. It's, it's all right. I don't know. <clears throat> I used to think Netflix could do no wrong, but then now they have like 15 series and some of them I have no interest in at all. And I, I don't know. It's okay. I like the actor, but it's just, it's not the greatest thing in the world. I don't know. I I I think once you're done with whatever series that you're about to talk about, you should should watch that Godless series though. Yeah, no. The more I, I think about it, I really really like that show. I won't go back to the Punisher. Like once I jump out of something, it, it's lost me. It's lost me. Okay. You know, I tried. I get like I said, I went at least at least four complete episodes, maybe five. I can't remember where I was at if I jumped out of five or six, but it just it lost me. It wasn't quite there. Um, so yeah, normally something, if I watch something and then if I find I've watched four or five in a row immediately, then I know that I'm into it. Yeah. That happened with a terrible Netflix series called Slasher. Did I, did I you did tell me week? about that. I, I don't remember. If I, I couldn't remember if I did, but, uh, I'm on to the second season already. It's just, it's terrible, but it's very mindless entertainment. Is it's it like, uh, like a singular serial killer or multiple? No, it's so each season is a different killer. So season two, it's only, they're, they're only on, there's only two seasons. The first one was a, a serial killer in a small town. Uh, the second season is um, about these five individuals that were camp counselors, and they ended up, they killed like a, a co-counselor. Oh. Yeah, and then they go back five years later to the scene of the crime because I, I won't tell you the story, well, but, but they end up getting back together for it. And then while they're there back at the campgrounds, 
there's someone's killing them all. So it's someone yeah. named someone named Jason. They, yeah, they right. To go back to camp. But now, camp you know, Crystal Lake. It's, it's certainly is not good. It's not going to win any awards or even be recognized or anything. But it's just dumb, mindless entertainment, which which gets me. And before I knew it, I was like five episodes in. So I'll finish that. It, it, what whatever. I've also watched. Uh, I finally watched uh, Spider Man Homecoming. Yeah, loved it. Loved every second of it. Thought it was great, spectacular movie. Um, and my mom wanted to watch. The uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. So yeah. I haven't watched that one. I tried to watch the the Rise one or whatever yeah. the first one was. Is there three? I don't. Three I can tell you because remakes? I haven't watched the remakes. This is the first one I watched. Ugh, man, um, oh no, bad. I saw one of them. One of them was. I think there's three because one of them wasn't bad. I've only watched. I think the there's first three. One. I think the first one wasn't bad. Yeah, and I didn't watch the second. one. It might one. be just called Planet of the Apes because with Franco, and then I think the second one was Rise, and then whatever, yeah. the, whatever the newest one is, or something so like this, that. The third yeah. one I think is War for the Planet of the Apes. Yes, and, uh, yeah. and it was with Woody Harrelson, and it was just it was really bad. I mean, it was really really bad. There was it was such a slow movie. It something was has bad. to be pretty bad for like if Woody Harrelson is is in it. And there was potential with his character too, okay. but uh, it just it wasn't wasn't very good. Um, yeah, even she hated it, but so it was a waste of six bucks. But yeah, so the Spider-Man movie, thumbs up. Planet of the Apes one, the war for the apes planet is just terrible. And uh, I recommend Slasher if you like uh, killer movies. There's some great kill scenes in it too, which is why I really enjoy it. <laughs> All right, so it's on to uh, our Bears report. Um, our brief conversation about your Chicago Bears, who are now 3-9 and nine on the season. Uh, we have four games to go. The uh, Bears just lost uh, last weekend to the... Uh, then one win, San Francisco 49ers. Two. Two win? Two win. What? The, they won two before coming in. To oh, so that was their the third? Yeah, they were uh, two wins, and uh, they were the two Browns and nine? are okay. so oh, now, oh wins. So now, yeah, so they're, they get their third win against the Bears, and it was the uh, Robbie Gold revenge game where he outscores the Bears, and the Niners win 15 to 14. Well, the score was not reflective either because they got smoked. Oh, they got smoked. It, it, they, On both they, sides like, of the ball. The, the Bears could have very easily could have lost that game 31 to, to, to 14. Right. It, that, that well, think have, about it. Five field goals. I mean, they could have right. easily had five scores. Right. I mean, oh, it they was, did, but yeah. some touchdowns. Right. I mean, very, very easily. It was, just, it was not even a close game despite the score. The Bears managed uh, one offensive touchdown. It was a, a pass from, uh, from Mitchie. Um, the other one was a uh, return from uh, Tree Cohen. Um, it was just a terrible game defensively. Jimmy Garoppolo gets his first start for the Niners, and he—I mean, he—you know—he he looked like a guy who has spent years and years and years under good coaching and a good system with a with a Hall of Fame, one of the all-time great quarterbacks, uh, in his pocket to go over game film and watch and learn and learn defenses. He he looked like an NFL quarterback. Agreed. Yeah, I mean he. You know, he she was shredding the Bears in the middle of the field, and just they they could not do anything to stop the pass game. They had zero pressure on him. Uh, maybe he would have looked different against a better defense that got pressure on him. But the Bears have failed now for if not three, maybe four weeks in a row to get any kind of pressure from the front uh, on, on any opposing quarterback whatsoever. Well, you've got I mean uh, a good offensive staff, um, but he's two weeks in to the playbook. They don't play him, you know, his first week in, which. <laughs> And he, and he played the final drive of the game before the Bears, right? That was it. Right, right. Because uh, C.J. Beathard, um, the guy that they drafted from Iowa, was playing and playing poorly. But they're just, you know, they're in, they're in a giant rebuild. I mean, they brought in Kyle Shanahan, they brought in John Lynch, signed them both to six-year contracts. So they're kind of in it, in it with each other, which I appreciate. And I wish that uh, we'll get into this in a sec. I wish that this is something that we would do as well. Um, but yeah, week two, they throw him in there, but Shanahan is very good at game planning, simplifying the playbook for a guy who's been there for two weeks, but being a very good play caller. And obviously, I mean, they, they had him not as, not so much on the outside, but the middle of the field on both sides of the ball, they just completely owned him. Like yeah. they won that game in the middle, oh, yeah. which has been a bearish thing, regardless of who the defensive coordinator is for a long time. I don't know. And then the bears for some reason, I'm assuming this is Fox, we're playing zone the whole game when they've been very good at man all year. So yeah. it's just the coaching decisions, I don't I don't know. It's like a soup it's a head scratcher. I don't I I don't know what they're doing. I don't I mean at this point, why aren't you just more aggressive on both sides of the ball? Get Shaheen in there who is like a giant ass target. They started using him for the first time. The guy caught a couple of passes in the middle and scored a touchdown. It's right. just like they don't you know, or trying to run Cohen through the middle. I mean, 
come on, guy. You know, it's just I don't. It's very questionable play calling. I don't and alignments. I don't get it. Yeah, the the whole bear situation is just it's a it's a total disaster at this point. Uh, when you look at John Fox, the veteran head coach, who's had success elsewhere, passed it. He is past it. Uh, you know, now you have your your rookie GM who is just being questioned left and right in every opportunity possible. You know, my, my only thing is, and and I, people I've talked to have said no. You know, he wanted John Fox. I was hoping he was encouraged in that direction. You know, with Ernie Corsi being there uh, and that's absolutely with, it with Bears ownership and uh, and and uh, and Ted Phillips. I, I hope he was pushed that direction. That makes me question. You know, his his the fact that he wanted the job and just decided to stay with the job despite being told what to do and not really being in charge. I have other people telling me that he really is in charge. It was all his decision to hire John Fox. If he didn't want to, he didn't have to. You know, so there's too, too many questions about an organization that I think just gets recognized for not being a great organization, just being an old old organization. I, th- I think we confuse the two, that it's not it's not one of the all-time great franchises. It's just one of the old-time old, well, old, no, time old the, franchises. The, the, the fan base, you know what, it, um, justified in someone understanding the history of it being the charter franchise sure. in the NFL. But most teams have evolved from the being the charter franchise right. in the NFL and we do not, we have not we still have the same old school 80, model. 500 no shows. It's top down. Yeah, we're you know I think it was um the week before it was, you know, or it was uh 6,000, you know, it's just and these are people who are paid like these are paid seats and these that people are just choosing not, not to, to go. go. Right. Which is a smart move. You know, it, I don't know. I a couple of questions for you. I mean, like, well, this isn't a question. I think we're both in agreement that Fox needs to go. Um, and uh, I've been thinking a little bit about it, and I know continuity is something, but uh, I kind of think they need to burn through the whole staff. Oh no, I I, I, I agree. I think and now's the time to do it before you get any any, any deeper in for for Mitchie and his development. Uh, br- bring in a staff that's going to develop this guy into an NFL quarterback. He has the potential and the ability. It just if the talent's not around him and the coaching staff's not around him, it's not going to happen. I mean, he, he's he's not one of the natural all time greats of all time. I mean, that's that's not him. Um, but he has potential to be a an excellent NFL quarterback. He has all the skill set, all the ability to make all the passes. He has the athletic ability right now to do it and a short term memory to, which to, you to, can't to make plays coach. on his own. I mean, he can actually make plays on his own. Uh, we haven't had many quarterbacks that can do that. But again, you need talent around him, wide receiver wise. You need the proper coaching staff, and they need to do that if this guy's going to stick around as your as your future quarterback. You know, the the one thing that's always, and I, I definitely think you need to burn through the whole staff. So John Fox is the first Bears coach hire with previous head coaching experience. Is that accurate? Previous head coaching, two Super Bowl appearances, and uh, an overall winning record, other than one bad year in Carolina. But but he's the only he's the first coach they've hired with previous head coaching NFL experience. Ever. Everybody else, every ever, ever yeah. was all first time head coaches. Yep. Okay. Other than Hallis coming back, so like that going away and coming that back. Was, ever. That was a step in the right direction. I think that's a, a for me that's an angle to go. Culture change. Yeah. Someone who's, uh, I mean, a manager. Basically, you bring them in. They're a manager. I mean, that's what they. You know, they unless you've got some of the coaches who call plays, which it's difficult, but you could tell that they're very good at it when right. they do it. But yeah. So that, that, for me, was a step in the right direction. I, I want to see them go that route again. Again, I, I don't have anyone. I don't have names. I don't have a list of names. If Ryan Fox doesn't – if um, Ryan Fox. If Ryan <laughs> Pace – if Ryan Pace doesn't have a list of names a day and that number one guy is his target, then he, sh- then he, should, be, he should be gone too. Because, I'm I mean, sure he does. It's, it's, yeah, I, I hope so. Um, but the, one thing that, that really irritates me, and this is slightly off the subject about the Bears, but just talking about the franchise as a whole – and I'll, I'll never understand this, and it'll always irritate me, the fact that they don't own their own stadium. And I know a lot of teams don't own their own stadium. But to, to me, though, tell me I'm crazy or if this is it's something not to worry about. The fact that Bears don't really bothers me. The fact that there's there's issues with facilities and field continually, you know, year after year, that's, it seems to be an issue. The fact that they don't own their own facility and it's owned by the park district, by a terrible, ter- terribly run city to begin with, um, and you have other e- events that take place out of the Bears' control. It just it seems to really bother me, and that doesn't fit with the whole one of the you know franchise charter franchises of the NFL. You should have your own stadium by this point. You know, it just it bothers. It always has bothered me within sports. Should have our own stadium. I mean, with a better product on the field, uh, we should have a larger stadium. We have the smallest um, uh, smallest capacity seat, right. seat wise in the entire NFL. Right with um, with this fan base, yeah, you can certainly be bigger easily. Um, and I think this is proof, unless someone can 
can provide me with uh, a multitude of other teams that family ownership is not necessarily the best ownership. Um, you know, like the crafts were not the originators of the Patriots right. and he's one of the better owners in the league. It's just the, you know, yeah, you know, that, that whole, the, the bears need to sell the McCash need to sell. That's never going to happen. No, never. I mean, that's never going to happen. They, so I mean, I mean like, we need, like they, you need they, to get off that. They keep if that's reproducing and have, I don't more mean, more I don't mean you as I just mean yeah. people in general listening. Oh, yeah. If that's if that's a thing you have, if that's a target for you, just take that off the board because it's not going to happen, and it shouldn't be expected either. I mean, you know, you know, you shouldn't go to Virginia and expect her to be like, oh yeah, I'm going to sell what right. my dad started. Yeah, that's you're right. Go ahead. Just, but you could gone. start with an actually qualified uh, president of operations. It, there's there's got to be someone in the family who can be better at the job. Well, not just I don't I don't mean just George, but yes, I agree. I just mean Phillips down. Is a big problem. Oh, I agree. Like, and Philip, I mean, hey, Phillips isn't coaching. He's, but like, that guy is way too involved for someone who does not he has have a football right. background. He has influence for sure. He does have influence and he, he's involved in decisions. And whenever there's important press conferences, he's part of it because he's part of the decision process. Right. And it, there, there's, there's got to be, even if it's someone who's younger, I don't care. There, there's got to be somebody better at running a football organization in the family. There has to be. There has to be. And if it's going to stay, identify that person and put them in charge to at least to at least have the sense to say, hey, you know what, I can be in charge, but I know I don't know what to do. So the best thing for me to be as in charge is to step aside and find someone to run the football side of things. Yet, yeah, as far as the pyramid's concerned, I'm at the top of the pyramid. Right. But as far as football decisions go, it, it ends at the hire that I make of the person below me right. who knows how to run a football organization. Right. And, uh, you know, going circling back to what you said about Pace's decision, I think it's twofold. One, yeah, it, myself included, it seemed like an obvious thing when that guy became available with a rookie general manager. Right. You know, I, I wasn't 100% all in because Fox's negatives have always been um, – bad um you know some some bad in-game decisions some weird you know not being able to kind of uh come up with a new strategy at at halftime and like clock management you know but i mean that's he's not the only one that that's an issue with right um so there was a lot of sense to it but i feel like it was very even though pace had that first decision man that's his first thing you know and he's i don't know that how much he could put his foot down plus they had a Corsi in there you know, I mean, like, of course, he made him a candidate, but he blew them away. And I'm not done with Pace yet. I'm only going to give him one more year. Right. Um, or at the very least, give him a, a hire that he actually wants, because every source that I've ever talked to says he wanted to wait for Dan Quinn. Um, but I, I don't I don't know. Like, uh, you know what? Sidebar, of course, he now, you know, the Giants fired their coach yeah. and the general manager. They've brought him in to be a part of it, and there's rumors that David Gettleman's going to do it, who shit the bed as the GM of the Carolina Panthers, but he knows the guy. Right. The Giants know the guy. So it's just this constant circle of crap where like, we finally need to hire somebody who is not necessarily the obvious I, I just choice. Think, I think it's it's great. Well, first of all, Ernie, or, Ernie Acorsi was brought in to Denver when Fox was hired there. Ernie Acorsi was brought in to Chicago when Fox was hired here. Yep. First of all, if you're the Bears or the Broncos and you need someone to put John Fox on your radar, then you you don't deserve to be making a hire for a football coach. Right. And the fact that Ernie Corsi is like, I got this guy. You may have never heard of him. His name is John Fox. I'm going to bring him in for an interview. Denver's like, all right, we'll hire him. Oh, yeah, by the way, we have Peyton Manning, too. That's going to work out well. John Fox. I got a guy here in Chicago, John Fox. You want to meet him? I'm going to introduce you. I know you've never heard of him before. Yeah, right. I'd like to meet this guy. Like, really? Like, you really need someone to bring to you John Fox? Hey, I've got this guy for you. It's top secret, though. His name is John Fox. Okay, great. Like, that's a great job Ernie's, Ernie's developed for himself. I'd like to have that job. Ugh. It's so when Fox gets fired here, I want to find a team that has an opening and be like, hey, I got a guy for you. The His Giants. name is John the Giants. Fox. <laughs> He's going to yes. go with the Giants. He's going to go back to the Giants, right? Yeah. Because he was there a long Full time ago. Full circle. Yeah, yeah, that worked with the Corsi. That's how it all started. Ugh. Uh, because they, the Panthers uh, consult, uh, you know, um, asking him about asked him about it, and that's how he ended up over there because he was so, well, he was a really good defensive coordinator. Yeah, no, but, yeah, absolutely. But that's kind of where people's peaks are sometimes, man. Right. Like, a, speaking of which, I hope at the very least um, this this guy gets an interview, uh, Jim Bob Cooter, just because of his name. With the Lions, but guy? he's also a good coach, yeah. and uh, he's thirty four, and that's a trend that I'd like to see more of because these guys 
don't depend on old ways. They come up with new ways. And, yeah. uh, well, well, I don't know. We'll see. I don't it's know. Gonna be I'm, interesting. I'm hoping the Bears go back to their roots and bring Singletary in for an interview. I would love that. Sure Singletary. That. I feel like he'll get a courtesy one like he did the last time. Yeah, I think that would be a good move. <laughs> really bring back the, the dominance of the 80s. With or without pants. Our identity. You know, the Bears may not win, but you'll know that you played the Bears because you'll be sore that whole week. Yep. Hey, guess what? Every opponent makes your body sore. doesn't matter who they are. Truth. Just FYI. Do you want to push? Uh... No, we'll do it real quick. Why not? Okay. <laughs> Why not? These first seconds will be an hour long. It's fine. Oh, so anyway, Bears and uh, the Bungles later this afternoon. You got a pick on that one? Uh, you know, I got Cincy by at least three touchdowns. I can't three touchdowns at least. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. It's gotten to the point where I, even though I want them to win, I can't pick them. I mean, I I don't. I think it'll be close because they're both kind of. They're not great. I think they're going to rally around uh, their their head coach, who's finally going to get fired after you know he should have been fired four seasons ago. Naked photos of Goodell or something, man. Right. Yeah, it turns out in the end he has naked photos of himself. I will make you no, look at this yeah, again. Yeah, just keep showing people. <laughs> Stop texting me your dog, and I'll keep you as the head coach. Oh, God. Yeah. All right, so, yeah, I got I got Bengals by at least three. I think I expect it's a, it's a, it's a route, a blowout today, uh, this afternoon. So uh, you think close, but you're going to pick the Bengals because you just can't pick the Bears. Well, I don't I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's going to – I just don't think three touchdowns is going to happen, but I know that I don't feel like they're, they have any chance of winning. All right. Okay, here's the first question for you in uh, moderately paced fire questions. Um, I'm trying to find the silliest questions possible in this in this group of uh, questions I have. And here's number one for you. Uh, at the beach, Jason, would you rather play in the sand or play in the water? Sand. Sand? Yeah. Why? Well, that leads into um, my question, okay. one of them. Um, would you rather explore a new planet or the deepest parts of the ocean? New planet. Yeah, me too, because my answer is I don't fuck with the ocean. Man. I don't go to the ocean either. Nope. Sharks, fuck you. I'm Look, not doing it. Well, for me, it's just, it's dirty, and then there's the things in there that can hurt you, and yep. I, I don't no. do that. So yeah, I'd rather... I like a pool. I'd rather... Yes, me too. I'd mm-hmm. rather risk... Um, the no oxygen uh, atmosphere in yeah. space than the no oxygen atmosphere underwater where something's going to eat my ass. Right. No yeah. thanks. Good. Yeah, me too. I'm a sand guy, not a water guy. I don't like uh, ponds, lakes, rivers, or oceans. Yeah, I, mean, I don't mind looking at them, but I just don't want to be in them. Oh, yeah. No, nowhere near them. <laughs> that just yeah. sounds like the dating in the 90s. Nowhere near like, Hey, yeah. oh, no. Yeah, so. just uh, give me a pool where I can smell the chlorine and see the bottom. I'm good to go. Yep. I can see that there's nothing in there that'll kill me. I'm good to go. All right, we've now officially uh, wait awoken awakened my wife. My wife, <laughs> she's up. <laughs> um, all right, let me see. Oh, okay, do you would you, what do you prefer, hot or cold drinks? Hot or cold drinks? Cold. Yeah, because you're you don't even drink hot coffee. You're an iced coffee guy. Yeah. Which is relatively new for you to begin with. Yeah, we're about a year into yeah. me drinking coffee at age forty-two. <laughs> I'm at a point now at 44 where I'll make coffee at night. Yeah, I know. You said, it's you, terrible. I think we talked about that in like episode one. Yeah, pot of coffee at five o'clock at night because I feel like it. Yeah. No, I. if I had a pot of coffee, it wouldn't be in here. It'd be like, they're probably not alive. Right. There's no way. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a pot of coffee and a Red Bull at this one point, day I probably and see like, what happens. Probably just like, video you. I let, like, like nod through my own arm and bled out. <laughs> like... <laughs> All right, so you're a, you're a cold drinker. Uh, I'm a, depends on the time of the day or my mood. I yeah. do both. I don't know. Sometimes I'll have have tea if like my throat hurts. Yeah, like I did that this week. But I did too. I was drinking tea this week. Yeah, my Earl Grey. Yeah, well, I had some kind of uh, breakfast tea. I don't know. I don't know what that means. I mean, I I understand, kind of understand it, but I don't know why. It, it tastes bad I don't know if you, why do, you it's drink a, it out of the realm breakfast of breakfast. Tea. Right. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite comedy movie? Favorite comedy movie? Uh, God, that's tough because there's just so many, and I gotta I gotta filter through. Um, I guess I have to go. I'm trying to think of one I can watch over and over and over and over. Well, and over there's and over. A, I mean I've got a pretty long list of those. Yeah, <laughs> like uh, tell me some of yours. Maybe it'll it'll. Well, I I have a number one. I have, have a number one, and it's Christmas time, like Christmas vacation. Okay. That's one of my favorite movies ever. I think okay. it's hysterical. Uh, I know every single line in that. I mean, yeah, every single line in that whole movie. Uh, Elf came to mind because uh, I can watch that over and over, and I and that never, and I can watch it year round, and I never get tired of it. A lot of feral stuff. 
Yeah, uh, old school is always a, a top for me. There's Will Ferrell again. Anchorman's up there for me. Anchorman, yeah, I'd put Anchorman in there too. Uh, I guess it'd be hard to pick one one particular comedy. I mean, I could give you a favorite movie of all time, but yeah, like one particular comedy, my favorite comedy, that's tough to do. Yeah, I felt like that was a, a more difficult question because I think I, people, if they don't know that Forrest Gump isn't my favorite movie, right. then, I, then you, you're listening to the first episode like that you've ever, or out of our, what are we in, episode 17? 17. Yeah, if you don't know that, because I probably brought it up on about 16 episodes. Yeah, we're on 17. It's called Wild Pansy. That's what you're listening to right now of the AFDE show. Um, do you prefer reading books or watching movies? I mean, from a sample size, it's, it's got, you know, it's movies. Um, I need to, I, for a while there, I was like f- going through You're reading a lot of three, books. three books a week. I need to get back into that because, you know, I, may, I think it just makes me more sharp, but yeah. it's just been easy lately, easier lately, just to be lazy and watch movies. That's definitely me. Uh, definitely lazy. Movie. I prefer movies over books, but uh, I'm going to start in January. That's one of the new things for 2018. Uh, five books a month. That's my goal. Five, five a month. It's a good goal. Get through five a month. That's uh, that would, If you do the math on that properly, it would come out to 60 books in a year. Yeah. yeah. And diversify it, too. You know, don't don't. Yeah, I'm gonna read some in Spanish, uh, some in English. <laughs> yeah, that's what I meant by uh, ethnic diversity. Oh, is that, your oh, is that not what you meant? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, but just change up the subject matter. Otherwise, it 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 gets very not redundant because you know you're not unless you're reading like a JFK book yeah. five times in a row, which I would probably do. But it just like it flexes a different muscle. It's it's a good way to do it. Um, All right, question three for you. Okay, what words of wisdom would you pass on to your childhood self? Oh, I'm thinking too. words of wisdom. Oh, probably uh, don't. I don't max out your first credit card. That's what I would. That's, what I would tell <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, yeah, I would, would tell myself be better financially and don't max out that first credit card you have. Those two things. Yeah, I'm gonna go further back in time because that would be what would I tell my college self when I <laughs> maxed out a Discover card uh, that was given. They were just giving them out on campus. Right. Um, I, I, I'd say le- learn to be more patient. And I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm sure I have way less brain cells now than I did then. And uh, I feel like I'm smarter now than I was then. Yeah. But study harder. Like, honestly, you know, oh, it wasn't yeah. that big a deal. Just because I didn't like school doesn't mean that I couldn't have learned a lot more than I did. No, that's There's a lot that, of things I still don't know. I, w- I would that. add that too, just to, to take studies more serious. The patience is, yeah. it's hard, you know, and I feel like that is something that's wired into your brain, but you can practice it. And yeah. at this point, it's really hard to like to change at 42, you know? It's, All right. Number four, uh, do you like spending more time alone or more time around people and why? Well, I mean, like I'd say for a large chunk of my life, it was around people because like it's just more stimulating, you know, like I love talking to everybody and I still do. But now I've just I've had moments where I just kind of want to just like be alone. I don't know. It's like decompressed time. Yeah. You know, I I, I like do that more now than ever. I like both, but I, I have to have a certain amount of time alone each week and it's it's harder to do that at this point in life with but the boys yeah um and you know with a roommate boys, but i, I certainly mom. uh yeah i certainly i need i need time to be alone whether it's even it's as simple as going to the grocery store alone or running errands just alone it's just I, I need that time where i don't have to talk about i want to i don't have to yeah you know i can just uh, you know accomplish some tasks or just sit and do not like yesterday my mom was out doing stuff i cleaned up a little bit went grocery shopping put some stuff away cleaned up Got more Christmas lights up. I turned the tree on, turned the lights on. I, I sat on the couch and I just listened to a Blake Shelton album. And I just, just I, you know, it was great. It was just perfect to what I needed yep. at that time. I, I, didn't I needed that. this I to be alone, do nothing. Not leave the house yesterday yeah. just because, I, you know, I'm tired of feeling like crap. And so. on a side note, too, that uh, his latest album came out November 3rd. It's called uh, Texoma Shore. Uh, Tex- what? Texoma. T E X O H M A. Texoma. Okay. It's like Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, it took me a second. Um, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Not to be confused with Florabama Shore that is now coming out. MTV's, uh, it's some more morons. It's like the sequel to Jersey Shore. Oh, lovely. Uh, Florabama. So his last album came out November 3rd, and it's, uh, for me, uh, track one to the last track. I listen, love them all. 
It's the second album in a row this guy's put out where I've gone from top to bottom and nice. loved every There's song. No skip song. That never happened. No, no skip, no skip songs. songs. Yeah. I, that, I never do that. I never, ever, ever get away with that. As always, I, I, it's usually for me, it's like three or four I like in an album, and there's a majority of skips. This dude has put out two albums back to back where I can listen top he's to bottom. He's solid, man. I love him. I yeah, think the only favorite. person I like more than him is uh, Aldine. Like, I really, really oh, like Oh, yeah, Jason Aldine's great. And obviously, uh, like, Zach Brown's good. And, um, oh, God, of course. This is one of the first brain farts I've had in a in the in our hour of recording, but uh, Stapleton. Oh, Chris really Stapleton's like, fantastic. I really like him, but I think Aldine's just still my favorite. Yeah, Sh- my favorite Shelton's is always there. it's always been Garth, and Garth went away for a while. We talked about him last week, um, last episode. Chris Gaines. <laughs> yeah, uh, but as far as individual artists, Blake Shelton is my is my number one right now. That dude is just he's killing it. He's great, great two great albums in a row. Listen to him top to bottom. Really, really good stuff. Uh, but Zach Brown is my favorite band. If you got to do a whole band thing, I know it's Zach Brown, but right. I mean, that, right, but he, I love everything they do too. Yeah, all it's, of them it's are It's fantastic. Very so good, so good. But yeah, this uh, Blake Shelton album is great. All right, so um, alone time. I need it. You uh, have finally discovered the importance of it. All right, yeah. In your so old age. This is the okay. This is number five, right? You yep. want to do that? Okay. Uh, and the way I wrote this. City or this question, let me think of how to better do this. So I, my question is, what's your favorite part of the city? Um, but kind of think of it through a, a couple of different lenses. Like, you know, if you have an answer for what's your favorite part of Chicago in general, but like what's like living there, having, you know, both of, I live here now, you've lived here. Yeah. So think of it kind of in like an well, all-encompassing you know, thing. It's not really a location or, or area or uh, but there's a certain aspect of it and it's just the fact that it's I know it's I know it's the third largest market in the country, third largest city in the country. It's the fact that it didn't matter what time of night it was, like the city was always alive. Yep. That's what I liked about people it. in beer gardens at 10 a.m. Like I, I, I love yeah, I yeah. love that aspect of of city life is that it's it's always awake, it's always alive. Maybe not everyone, but there's always certain aspects of it that are always alive, always awake. Um, like, you know, the suburbs, it shuts down, man. I mean, it's like, boom, you're, it's it, you know, the, night, the night's here. You could wake up at, you know, you could fall asleep at six o'clock at night, wake up at 11 and be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go grab dinner, you know, or I'm going to go grab a drink or I'm going to go, because there's, there's people, people there. around, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, here, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the city. And I, I love that, that big cities never sleep. I love that aspect of it. Yeah. I'd say, I mean, there's so much that I, that I love about Chicago, but something that I've loved since, you know, I've, I've lived here is it's one of the only places I've ever been to where I could go to the same place seven nights in a row and every single time see a different crowd and meet different people. Oh, yeah. Whereas like in the Burbs, it's the same, same people, people at the yeah. same place every time. I, I get that. There. No, that's good. You know, that's sometimes good. No, that's meeting, a... uh, like regulars yeah. are kind of cool, but I just love that everywhere I go, yeah. I, you know, every time there's at least. No, that's a great point. And there's, there's certain aspects of it. Like when I go to Finn's, I know pretty much I can count on the same four or five guys at the corner of the bar. If I want to go hang out and get involved in conversation, I know that they're most likely going to be there. You yep. know, the, 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 the corner of the bar regulars. Um, and I'm not saying too that like in Libertyville we get locked down like 10 o'clock at night. I, I could walk around in the middle of the night if I wanted to. It's well, just, yeah, there's, there's a lot there's of nothing happening. Well, yeah, I was just saying that. <laughs> the I'd difference. say probably Finns is the most active just based on like the size. Well, of the, the whole downtown area. Yeah, yeah, it's just there's it's great, but um, yeah, I, I like that aspect of it that you know that there's going to be people there if you want. Um, but that's a cool thing about the city. Yeah, you can go to the same place seven times, seven days in a row, and it's going to be every time. Yeah, it can be you know, different. A so couple of friends, cool. this, you know, of a staff, but I could always count on meeting new people, which I that. That's something that I appreciate. All right, we'll take a, a brief time out. This is episode 17, Wild Pansy. It's Batacola, Ferrari, Discuss Everything. Back after this. It's 106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. All right, welcome back in. It's episode 17, Wild Pansy, a Batacola, Ferrari, Discuss Everything. We're brought to you by Mickey Finns. They are Lake County's first brew pub, located 345 North Milwaukee Avenue. Fantastic beer, delicious food, wonderful service, and great people there. You can uh, check them out on Facebook, uh, facebook.com slash Mickey Finns Brewery. Uh, they're also on Instagram. Follow them on Twitter, at Mickey Finns. They have uh, live entertainment on the weekends. Uh, you can uh, check out any one of their social media platforms, see what they have going on. Uh, specials every day, and again, fantastic beer right now. The time of the season is Santa's Magic. If it were not uh, 8 in the morning uh, when we started recording, we probably would be enjoying Santa's Magic at this point. If but we would have brought it, we would have been. I still would have had some because mm, it's good. Maybe a small breakfast portion. 
Yeah, if there's breakfast tea, like, there's got to be breakfast, breakfast beer. beer. There absolutely. actually is, though. Like, isn't there those? Oh, there's breakfast stouts. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so check them out. It's uh, Mickey Finn's Lake County's original brew pub, 345 North Milwaukee Avenue. He's Ferrari. I'm a Batacola. We begin episode two. I'm sorry, segment two of every episode. <laughs> uh, this is number 17 for us, Wild Pansy. Uh, with our segment, That's So Wisconsin. Of course, it is brought to us by our friends at Wills Northwoods Inn, 3030 North Racine in the Lakeview neighborhood. And um, something we went with, went with this week, because uh, we like to really diver- diversify, diversify, diversify um, our, the stories. You know, sometimes they're funny, sometimes they're ridiculous, sometimes they're um, things that are just Wisconsin's known for, slogans, whatnot. Um, but this is someone that we've talked about before. J.J. Watt named the Sports Illustrated's co-sports person of the year. Obviously, he is from Wisconsin. Um, he's a very dominant athlete on the field. But uh, his activity off the field this year has been off the charts. And, um, Matt, uh, let's, I mean, we've talked about this actually at the, I believe at the time, he was at about $12 million the last time we brought this up. Right. So he was fundraising for uh, relief for victims of Har- Hurricane Harvey. His goal of $200,000, he surpassed, I think, within a couple days. And he is now at a point of raising $37 million. million. Yeah, One ha- 185 times more than his initial fundraising goal. Right. So, again, the goal was two hundred grand. He's at a point of $37 million to help people uh, so- who have suffered because of Hurricane Harvey. Uh, my mom actually went down to Texas a couple weeks ago right. with a group of uh, people from church to uh, help victims of Hurricane Harvey do some work on their cleanup and uh, had a great time and uh, impacted a lot of lives that time. And here's a guy who, again, set out for a goal of 200 grand and uh, has now raised more than $37 million. So congratulations to J.J. Watt. Uh, of course, from Wisconsin, a uh, place for the Houston Texas, is out now with injury. But Played one the, at uh, Wisconsin. One of the fantastic players in the NFL. And, uh, of course, Appears to be one of the more fantastic people within our country as well. Uh, so that's our segment, That So Wisconsin, featuring J.J. Watt raising $37 Seven. million dollars for people uh, suffering from Hurricane Harvey. For a team that he, you know, was drafted by and, you know, obviously has ingratiated himself into the community. But, I mean, you know, it's it's interesting. You go, Somebody gets drafted, they go to a city, make it their home, because <clears throat> obviously you know how proud he is of Wisconsin. Right. And... Raises thirty-seven million dollars, so uh, for you know to help rebuild the city after right. after you know a horrible storm. So so good work. That uh, we appreciate it, you, yeah, JJ yeah, certainly Watt. certainly uh, well deserving of the recognition, uh, sportsman of the year, co sportsman of the year. Uh, that's our segment. That so Wisconsin brought to you by Will's North Woods Inn, thirty thirty North Racine, and uh, again check them all out online. I went there this uh, on Wednesday. Like right before, <laughs> right before oh. I started feeling yeah. sick, I think the Schlitz Tall Boys there actually lowered That's my immune gotcha. system. Yeah, but I went there this week uh, with a buddy of mine that I haven't seen in like shit a year. Um, so it was a good time. Went there, Schlitz Tall Boys, three bucks. There you go. Uh, we uh, uh, Kevin, the GM, comped our steak tacos, which were very good as well. Nice. So. Wills is fun. Wills is cool. Um, I am not good at trivia, and uh, my friend Ben and I participated in trivia. And I the the most difficult questions were I didn't even know, and I guessed we got. There you go. And then the ones that were obvious, we did not get. So of course, fun night at Wills right. Northwoods Inn, thirty thirty North Racine in the Lakeview neighborhood. Find out about their specials and all the fun stuff they have going on at WillsNorthwoodsInn.com. Yeah, it's not just a place for Wisconsin games, but they certainly are a Wisconsin bar. Uh, If that is your proclivity, then uh, make sure you check them out. But not just for that reason. Uh, Great people, great food, and, of course, all the adult beverages you can enjoy. So check them out online. Again, uh, 3030 North Racine, Wills North. What's in in the Lakeview area? Which brings us on to some funny stories that maybe you didn't uh, catch this past week. But uh, we will give you some headlines and stories here. And this first one actually made you laugh out loud, even (laughs) though it's your story. Yes. So I'll read the headline and Matt, you can read the description. Yeah. But uh, and I actually don't know that I've ever called them this, but opossum. Yeah. I generally refer to them as possum. Opossum. Opossum snuck into alcohol shop, stole bourbon, smashed it and drank it. And there's a photo of uh, of a possum next to an empty bourbon bottle. Yeah, so uh, Possum uh, was taken to Emerald Coast Wildlife Refuge uh, by police. 
who said it was found uh, by a store worker next to a broken, empty bottle of bourbon. It is believed to have broken into the shop in Fort Walton Beach to steal the alcoholic drink. Uh, Michelle Pettis, a technician uh, at the refuge, said a worker there found the possum up on a shelf uh, next to a cracked open bottle of liquor uh, with nothing in it. She definitely wasn't uh, fully <laughs> acting normal. Like that. That's great. So she was drunk. Uh, Pettis told the Northwest Florida Daily News the female possum appeared disoriented, was excessively salivating, and was pale. <laughs> the uh, staff pumped the marsupial full of liquids and cared for her as she sobered, sobered up. up. That's fantastic. <laughs> Wow. No, it's so, yeah, man. It's like the guy who uh, got locked in the beer cooler, except it's an opossum. That's great. Wow. She was drunk and had to be uh, brought back to a sobriety by a refuge center. That's that's fantastic. Oh, boy. Story number two Bangkok. Of course, it's American tourists. Yep. Two American tourists fined in Thailand for butt selfie at Temple. Thai authorities have fined two American tourists for public indecency for posing for a butt selfie in front of a famous Buddhist temple. Police on a Wednesday, uh, the two police identified as Joseph De Silva, 38, and Travis De Silva, 36, were arrested late uh, on Tuesday at an airport in the capital of uh, Bangkok. They were each fined 5,000... Um, oh, it's bot. Is it bot? Is yeah, that what I say? Uh, which is the equivalent of $154 for burying their naked buttocks for a picture taken last week at Bangkok's uh, Wat Arun, or Temple of the Dawn. So these two dudes are out in front of the Temple of the Dawn. They decide to uh, not only just take a selfie, but they want to take a butt selfie, uh, drop their drawers, and uh, take a picture. Now, the two American citizens admitted to taking the pictures. Uh, district police said, they told Reuters, uh, while Thailand has a reputation for racy nightlife, that's the that love this paragraph. Buddhist country is deeply conservative and revealing clothing is frowned upon while public nudity is considered, is considered offensive. offensive. And I, I would agree with that depending on the person who is nude. Uh, but these two idiots are fined $154 each for pulling their pants down in front of the Temple of the Dawn in Bangkok, Thailand. And they were arrested. So congratulations, uh, American tourists, for making us look dumb. Really nicely done. So I believe this is the first week that the Daily Mirror is not one. But if you noticed the first one, it was Mirror.UK. So yeah. it's a, a variation of it. Uh, just wanted uh, two honorable mentions. We don't need to go into the story. I, I hope there's a picture with this, though. I want to see this. Now, yeah, no, I'm going to generalize. You know it's a you know it's a hipster who did this. Yes. Like, you know oh, hipsters for sure. started this. People are ditching their boring Christmas trees for pineapples this year. And, yeah, I'm not talking about, like, uh, what Trish thought. It was you know, like a bunch of pineapples in the shape of a tree. No, it's one pineapple decorated. Yep, here's a picture. Uh, wow, and this is, yeah, it's an actual. We've all seen a pineapple with the uh, many green stems, uh, leaves at the top. Uh, very rigid uh, leaves at the top of a pine tree and or a, a, a pineapple. And this is actually this, this someone decorated. Yeah. Someone put candy canes yeah, and mini ornaments. Garland uh, on the wow. table around it because you can't really garland a pineapple. Um, yeah, I just now I have a vision of uh, hey kids, let's go get in the van. We're going to Trader Joe's to pick out our pineapple. Yeah, Christmas. <laughs> that's uh, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna generalize with you and say a hipster in a very small tiny apartment. Yeah. If you if you if you bring cool. the if you drag the photo out, there will be a pack of Parliaments and probably a tall boy of Pabst Blue Ribbon. Ugh. Yep. All right. And this headline, um, you know, I can kind of paraphrase everything for you, but uh, firefighters are seriously unimpressed by a YouTube prankster who cemented his head in a microwave. This is a real story. So basically, this, these morons who do these YouTube challenges um, decided to pour cement into an open microwave. Um, I believe he put a straw in his mouth so he could breathe. Put his head in there. The cement dried and he was stuck in there, to which he started freaking out and his friends could not free him. So firefighters came and because it was on his face, had to disassemble the microwave, which was um, basically like solder. You know, like it, they, they couldn't just pull it apart. It was melted together. And then they had to use a screwdriver to chisel away at uh, at it to free his face. I don't understand. What what did he think was going to happen to wet cement? I don't. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that was like the thought of the challenge. I don't think he thought far enough ahead about getting out. Wet cement dries yeah. and becomes hard. So, yeah, that's uh, that's another story. Um, that's our That's our random funny stories for the week, which moves us over into... Wow. Yeah. 
That is that's severely dumb. Yeah. So yeah, dumb. See, I like to I like to save the dumbest one to roll into dumb criminals. Wow. All right. So here's where we're, uh, we're at this week, dumb criminals, and this takes us to um, uh, Placer County, California, where sheriff deputies arrested three people this past Wednesday after a large pile of mail was found inside their car. Mail, M-A-I-L. The trio, identified as Marvin Lyles, uh, Jamika Franklin, and Misha Cooper, actually called deputies to the scene. According to a post on the department's Facebook page, they called 911 to get help starting their car, which was parked next to a Pride Open mailbox. Inside the car was a large stash of mail, that wasn't theirs. To say the least, they were not happy to be arrested since they called us for help in locating their keys. The department wrote in the post, all three suspects were booked in the South Placer Jail with bail ranging from $20,000 to $65,000 according to the department. While the story of the arrest brought the obvious dumb criminal comments on Facebook, the department used the comment section to remind people that mail theft is no joke and extremely common, especially around tax season. We encourage everyone to check their mailboxes daily and report any suspicious activity. Mail theft has become an epidemic and a crisis in California, according to the Mercury News. Thieves are looking for checks they can alter or personal information on that they can use to create fake credit card accounts, according to the story. To combat the problem, the Postal Service has created an email system called Informed Delivery, which sends images of letters that will be delivered later in the day, the Mercury News said. So these idiots. Federal, open, federal crime. Pride open a mailbox. Now, this is not, not like a person's individual mailbox. This is a big blue mailbox. Yep. They pried open, stole a, a, an, like a, a, considered an armful of mail, threw it in their back seat, couldn't find the keys to their car, so they called police while their car was parked next to the mailbox they pried open with the back seat full of the mail they had just stolen. That, ladies and gentlemen are dumb criminals of the week, and they come to us from the state of California this week and not Florida, not Florida. or <laughs> Ohio. So thank you for that and Flo- Merry Christmas. The flow Ohio criminal system. That's right, the flow Ohio stories. <laughs> wow, and that, of course, leads us into uh, oh, this Florida. week's <laughs> a, a, a edition of Dumb Apps with Jason Ferrari. All right, so um, again, I'm not kidding. Uh, I found two uh, this week, very, very different uh, types. The first app... Uh, is called Rock <clears throat> Rock That Cock. It's currently in development by two women who want to, quote, raise the standards of, quote, dick pics. Oh, boy. Let's users decorate penises with doodles or place them in funny backdrops. A penis flying to the moon? Sure. Send us that next time we need a laugh. So Rock That Cock is, uh, uh, I believe at the time it was in development. I'm wondering if it's live. I have not tried to install Rock That Cock yeah, on my phone. Yeah, you don't phone. need that history anywhere on your phone. <laughs> yeah, my Google history is already fucked so, up. So, Jason, uh, tell us about this search for Rock That Cock. Uh, <laughs> I'm good, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think you just get it. Yeah, I don't, we don't need to say anything else on that. That's just... Number two is... God, it's very... Um, God bless America. It's very uh, aptly brought up based yeah, no, on our, great our Star Wars conversation at the yeah. beginning. And talking about dorks. And one thing, uh, we kind of moved away to a different topic when we, you, you were talking about that. Every time I think about a new Star Wars movie coming out, I think of the the um, the comic dog doing the... Oh, doing that's, the, that's the best. Going to the Star Wars premiere. Yep. Uh, uh, oh, my God. What's this button do? Is this call your mother? <laughs> yes. Um, it's my it's my breather. <laughs> Which of these buttons do you pick to call your parents to pick you up? <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> Wait, what is that? A little Jedi in there? Yeah, it's a little Jedi. That's the only time he's going to see female genitalia. <laughs> oh, my God. It's amazing. So uh, the name of our second app is called the Jedi uh, Jedi Star Name Generator. Or Jedi, Jedi Star Name is the name of the app. And basically, you put your name in, and it generates a Jedi name for you. So this is uh, not only dumb, but you are a... You are, or yeah, I am a, sp- a stormtrooper. You are a huge nerd. <laughs> All right, hang on a second. Let's, uh, we, we, this is one we can actually do and, uh, and not be embarrassed that I've actually searched for it. Uh, but let's see what we can come up with here if it is on the uh, iOS. Uh, yes, I did not look if it was on iOS or Android. Well, no, it's not on iOS. This one, so I put in Jedi Star Name, and all that comes out is Lightsaber Battle 
dual 3D. And I can, I can get that. <laughs> I know. That, I brought, that was one of our dumb apps from like way, way back. Where oh, I was it really? In, where two people hold up lightsabers and like have a battle. And it makes the noises, right? Yes. Jedi star name. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it's not available on, uh, on, on the iOS system. Maybe it's only, right? uh, it's only available on the now defunct Windows, Windows Yeah, phones. maybe that's what it is. Uh, Jedi name generator. Let's see if we can... Fine, because I would uh, gen- okay. Star Wars name generator. This is uh, something similar. Uh, all right, I'm gonna put our names in here. Ready? Let's do this here. Okay. Let's see. Uh, no, I want to put my name in though. You're not helping me here. This is not working. Okay, there we go. Let's try this one. There's wow. There's more than one of these. Oh <laughs> yeah, Let's, I'm not surprised. Uh, make a random name. Yeah, I want to do that. What What do I have to do here? Choose your Star Wars name. Mail. Okay. Uh, oops, choose to get a Star Wars name. Well, maybe it's not. Well, name. I don't Here think we go. it's not a converter, nope. right? It just okay. Got it, Jason. Uh, Ferrari. Let's put your name in here first, and I want to make you male, and we will generate your Star Wars name. Uh, oh, your Star Wars name is. <laughs> Future episode, future episode <laughs> name. God, I hope you, yours is worse. Your name is Break Ray Sailor. <laughs> doesn't sound gay like at all. B R A K E. B R A K E. Ray Sailor. One word. Just how Spell it's it. spelled. Oh, it's Ray R A Y R A Y. Like S A L O R. Yep. Hey Sailor. Yeah. So it's it's not to be confused with Rake Gay Sailor. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is fantastic. This All right, now put such yours a in. Great idea, <laughs> Matt Abaticola. Generate Star Wars name. Oh boy. Altarf. A L T A R F. Altarf. Giant Flyer. G I A N T F L I E R. Oh, I forgot to read the description. I am Altarf Giant Flyer, a smuggler from Helska. You, my friend. Let's see what you were again here. Let's see if we can. Okay, I, I've got to put your name back in so we can find out what you are. Uh, Jason Ferrari. Oh, I better give you the same name. I'll be ticked if it changes it. Mail, and you are. Yep. Break Race Sailor. Oh, you're a Starship Racer from Muskery. There you go. I'm a smuggler and you're a you're a sailor. <laughs> Hate sailor. You uh, break you break for sailors. Good God, man. Muskery. All right. <clears throat> wow. There we go. All righty. Well, we don't get the app, but we get the enjoyment of uh, a Google search. Future future names in the of right. show names in the making. You might have to change the name of our actual show. Not the not even title show titles, but could be the uh, race sailor and uh, uh, a bad cola and for yeah. What is it? Ray Sailor and no, oh, yeah, no, no. It keeps got to be giant flyer. No, Ray Ray Sailor and Altarf discuss everything. <laughs> <laughs> giant flyer and Ray Sailor discuss everything. We'll take a brief time out, recover from that, and uh, we'll come back with episode three. Or I'm sorry, geez, segment three. Uh, we have our best tweets of the week. Oh, good grief! Stay tuned because I have the funniest tweets from parents this week. According to the Huffington Post, you'll want to watch those and listen to them as well. We also have um, This Day in History, which today for us is uh, December 10th. Yes. For you, it's after the December 10th, but you can find out what happened on Since December 10th. we're done recording, I need to call my mother. As well as um, our inspirational story of the day. Back after this, a Batacola Before I Discuss Everything, brought to you by Mickey Finn's Lake County's Original Brew Pub. Very exciting. Don Vader himself... He's here. All the other nerds tremble in his presence. What are you supposed to be? I am Triumph! Oh, scary nerd! This would be my chest box that helps me to breathe. So this is to help you breathe, yes? Yes. And which of these... (laughs) Which of these buttons calls your parents to pick you up? Welcome back in. It's segment three of episode 17 already. It's uh, Wild Pansy is the name. He's Ferrari. I'm a Batacola. This is where we discuss everything. We're brought to you by Mickey Finn's Lake County's oldest brew pub, 345 North Milwaukee Avenue. Uh, got talked into dinner there Wednesday night with the boys. Picked them up 
we were hanging out and uh, Hank's like, we want to go to dinner. We don't want to eat at home. And I'm like, no, let's eat at home. I don't feel like going out. Not feeling good. No, no, no. Let's go out to dinner. Hank goes, dad, we never go anywhere. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are everywhere all the time. Like, seriously. Fine, we go. But it was it was great because then that's when we got to watch the Bulls and Hornets and I right. got to see his public reaction. I tried recording him, but he wouldn't let me. Every time he pulled up. Jack's not on to it yet. Hank is. Like, if you put the phone up and you're watching him and it doesn't, like, go away right away, he knows it's not a picture. He knows you're recording him. He does. He wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> Smart kid. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's Mickey Finn's 345 North Milwaukee Avenue in Libertyville. Check him out. Great food. Great people. Fantastic beer. Santa's Magic's on tap right now. Get in there before it goes away. Uh, sometimes it doesn't even last before Christmas, so don't uh, let this slip by. Well, we need to b- grab one more at least. For I'll get another growler. We'll grab a couple um, <clears throat> so you can have one for the holidays as well. Uh, let's start off with our best tweets of the week. And, of course, we always like to start because uh, you probably don't read these. This is uh, from the Huffington Post. These are the funniest tweets. According to the Huffington, Huffington Post, uh, funniest tweets from parents this week. And our first one, uh, Jay, is uh, at too questionable. That's the number two, too questionable. If a parent tells you they don't have a favorite, they're lying. Coffee is their favorite. <laughs> Coffee is their favorite. What? These are the funniest ones, remember? Yeah. These are the ones that they've said are the funniest ones. Here's a tweet from uh, at sarcastic mommy four, the number four. Wait. We've, this is a repeat, right? Well, it's a, a not a repeat tweet, but repeat a repeat handle. tweeter. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, these are the really funny ones. According to my kids' Christmas lists, they think this parenting gig pays pretty well. Yeah. Here's one from uh, at cheeseboy22. <laughs> parenting sounds fun in theory, then lice. Wow. Well, poorly poorly worded. <laughs> okay. At Unfiltered Mama. I haven't that's even another repeat handle. Yes, it is. Uh, this one's actually not too bad because I've experienced this. I haven't even started cooking, and my kids have already asked for something other than what you're making for dinner. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. Which is good. Uh, here is one uh, at R underscore A underscore dadass. R-A dadass. Uh, most of parenthood is basically just walking from room to room whispering, whispering WTF to yourself. Hmm. I think whispering would be whispering. Whispering. Here's one uh, at walking outside. Uh, I love my kids more than life itself. And also, please, for the love of God, say it's their bedtime. (laughs) These are unbelievable. At uh, Mother Playlist. Mother Playlist gets laundry life tattooed across post baby belly. At Copy Mama. Remember, these are the funniest ones this week. The, the funniest one. They aggregate these things. Like, is there someone who just combs through, uh, mm-hmm. or people submit? I don't know. No, her name is uh, Hollis Miller. Hollis Miller is responsible for doing this every week, and she doesn't get paid enough. Whatever it is, uh, this is from at Copy Mama. Me, I'm going to get a haircut. Four year old, but why? Your hair already looks so pretty. Eight year old, yeah, don't cut it. Both glance over at Elf on the shelf. Okay. What? <laughs> I think your reaction is even better. Uh, here's from uh, the at the cat whisperer. Oh boy! <laughs> this is me. Before kids, nobody wants to see your family Christmas photo shoot. Me as a dad, get those matching jammies ready. My Facebook cover photo is gonna be lit. So keep in mind the handle is at the, the cat dad whisperer. Is cat whisperer, and it's a man. Oh, wow. Here's one from at Ramblin' Mama. Ramblin' Mama. Welcome to Parenthood. You wake up sore for no reason now. Uh, Here's one from at My Mama Log. My Mama Log. Yeah, okay. I'm I'm remembering all these people now. Friend, looking through my toddler's overnight bag. There's no blanket or stuffed animal or bedtime book. Me. Nah, he's pretty chill. It doesn't matter what you do. He's not going to sleep. Is this on or no? The mic? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I don't... Yeah. <laughs> Here's one from at Honest Toddler. Honest Toddler. This is the mom, though. Uh, receptionist at pediatrician's office. Child's birth, date, and year. Me, mother of three. Wow, okay. I didn't know there was going to be uh, math. 
nervous laughter. Uh, let's see. He's four. It was late April or May. Rainy, I think. He's a classic Gemini, if that helps. This uh, isn't in his file? Yeah, that's a mom who doesn't know when her kid was born. That's it's funny. Well, yeah, yeah, she's taking full advantage of the of tweets expanding to 280 characters. Pretty sure. It's not like you were reading a paragraph. Here's a at mom truth bomb. A good way to prepare your kids for life's disappointment is to allow them to put 47 things on their Christmas list. <laughs> at dad pression. Just lit a candle on a holiday wreath. Our three-year-old responded by singing happy birthday. That's, <laughs> uh, well, that's something. <laughs> Here's one from at perfect pending. Perfect pending. A parenting tip. Make sure you buy your toddler a watch so they can get you updates on the time every two minutes. <laughs> I can see that being a thing. All right. Where, let's find our last one. I always like to finish off the week with at six pack mom, our hot mom, Stephanie Ortiz. Uh, 1985. Parent punishes child by making them stay inside instead of playing outdoors. 2017. Parent punishes child by making them go outside with no Wi Fi. Again, these are the funniest tweets each week from the Huffington Post, and we thank you, uh, Huffington Post, for providing these funny tweets every week to us. Those were the funny ones, Jay. Hello? Yeah. I'm is here. this on? I yeah. didn't know if this... Oh, yeah. Your headphones I plugged was, in? I was, yeah, I was, I was away from the mic. Those are the funny ones. <laughs> yeah, I know. From Huffington Post. The, that's a real knee slapper. <laughs> real knee slappers. All right, on to some of the Twitter handles we follow. Yes, so uh, at Time Out Chicago, which is obviously something a handle that talks about things happening in chicago they don't usually make anything funny you know it's usually just saying hey this bar opened this one made me smile just because i remember this movie but christmas movies that your kids will love because they're a little too young for die hard right it's a big debate going on right now uh and it is every year it seems is die hard a christmas movie or not uh how would you categorize die hard not as a christmas movie an action movie that happens to fall on christmas Right. It, it takes place during the Christmas season. It is not a Christmas movie. Anyone who thinks it's a Christmas movie is wrong. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Right. So, great movie. Not a Christmas Fantastic movie. Fantastic movie, yes. Um, we've talked about uh, enjoying this guy. I think Matt, you know, wants to bang him. Uh, Justin Timberlake's uh, Twitter handle. At least make out. <clears throat> yeah. Honored to be one dude among such strong women this week. It's the Hol- Hollywood Reporter. Uh, 100 up and coming women um, who uh, the the woman who wins actually gets a scholarship. So I believe a lot of these people are like PAs and uh, interns and things along that line. So Timberlake went and attended uh, in support of women, which is even better given the the landscape of what's been happening lately, things that are uh, uh, coming out news wise. So respect to uh, <laughs> respect to uh, Justin Timberlake um, for being a cool dude and for supporting um, women. I can't wait for the halftime show here in uh, Minneapolis. I can't. Yeah, that's the first time I've said that. And uh, yep. well, since the nipple. ever since yeah. the nipple. Right. He is uh, going to be your halftime performer for the Super Bowl. And uh, very excited about that. Um, the last one is uh, from US 99. The, uh, one of the well, the the original country station in uh, in Chicagoland. And uh, for those of you who didn't know that every year they do a uh, St. Jude um that was a marathon is Ra- radio radiothon, radio, radiothon yeah. um, where they raise uh, they all work for 24 hours and raise money for a charity this being St. Jude and uh, this year they made a pretty sizable amount um, with you know they never have a, a, a number goal in mind it's just kind of like how well they do they did an extremely good job this year the tweet is absolutely incredible thank you your generosity will do such amazing things for the kids at St. Jude uh, they raised seven hundred twenty-three thousand one hundred six dollars, which is uh, excellent and a very good charity as well. Yeah, fantastic job by the folks over at US ninety nine every year doing this, and uh, some of their on air people, some that I know, Styles and Roman, uh, Drew, who is a friend of this show and just an absolutely sweetheart of a guy, uh, Casper who does their afternoon show as well, and then uh, Kimmy Karuba who is their host at night. Uh, good job, they were all there involved in the tweet as well. Uh, just a, a wonderful thing each year that the radio station does for St. Jude. Uh, if you if you like to donate money or never have, and maybe you should, and you like the you've thought about it, uh, first place to start is St. Jude. That would be an uh, outstanding opportunity for you to give money if it's something you, you you don't do. And and you know and people always say, oh, I don't have enough to give, and literally any amount helps. That's the thing, because if you think you don't have enough, and if you can give ten, dude, if if a thousand people give ten dollars, right, thinking oh it's not enough, that's a lot of money. 
that's a lot of money that could go out and help a kid. Minimal donation. I right. mean, something that's not going to, you know, or even if it does hurt, hurt your wallet, you know, I mean, it's karma. Man. If it's a one time something thing, good for yeah, somebody. It's a one time thing that puts yeah. you in a tough spot, maybe for a week or two. Do it. And uh, and again, if you don't donate anything, St. Jude is a, is a great spot for you to check into and maybe look out to be your first uh, place of donation. I mean, it's good to do it any time of the year, but uh, around the holidays where it's more difficult for, for the patients and for the families. So, you know, it's funny. I was you can. listening to, uh, you know, I flipped back and forth with my uh, country station with the 99 uh, Christmas music right now on the lights. And then my Christian music station, which I listened to. Uh, which is now the light again, right? What? 93.9 is now the light again because it was some other, it was like, lo, no, it was something else. Oh, did it really change? Yeah, I don't even yeah. know. Now, oh. I, just, I saw a headline from Feeder that said it's now the light again. Oh, I had no idea it even changed. I just listened to the, the Christmas time. Um, so I'm flipping through and one of the, the DJs on, um, on K-Love is what it's called. Uh, he was taking a phone call from a woman and she was like, she was in tears and she's like, you know, we don't have money for Christmas this year and we got two little boys. And she's like, do you know of any organizations that are helping families out in the Sacramento area? Their station originates from San Francisco. That's where their studios are. The DJ that was on the air at the time was an older dude. He and his wife have older children, like 20 years and older. And he was like, we were just talking the other day about how we missed buying Christmas toys for the kids at the holiday time. He goes, so I don't know of anything that's going on at the station or organizations in our community. She goes, but I would love to help you out. He goes, so I'm going to get your information off the air. And my wife and I would love to help your family have a better Christmas wow, this year. That's great. And I'm like, that's great. Even if it's a couple hundred bucks. It's still something that that those kids were not going to have. Now they're going to have, you know, which is fantastic. So again, if it's something you don't do and you and you want to look into it, St. Jude is, is a great opportunity to start uh, helping kids with cancer. Because uh, if 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 kids go to St. Jude's, they they don't pay any money. They're, I mean, their families do not pay a dime for anything. Right. That's why it's so important. And it's uh, it's and plus it's it's kids fighting cancer and leukemia. I mean, there's man, there's nothing worse than seeing a sick kid. No. I you agree. know, and having kids that are that are healthy. I'm lucky and I'm blessed. And I see parents dealing. With sick kids, man, it's just, it's not fair, you know, and you have a place like St. Jude's is great. So congrats to US 99. And uh, again, look into it if it's something you might want to do. Moving on to uh, this day in history. For right. Us. Which is, it's, yeah, it's a weird parallel from uh, what we were just talking about, but there weren't any inspirational ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It, it happens. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, there, I don't, that's not true, but yeah. this one, uh, I just kind of pulled them in order. Um, so this day in 1967, yep, singer, December Otis, 10th. singer Otis Reading, yeah, and uh, members of the Bar K's were in a plane crash in Madison, which is interesting. I mean, there are a lot of people who have crashed and died in, uh, you know, as far as like icons from the music industry. Sure, Otis Otis Redding being one of them. You know, I I did not know that he died in a plane crash. You didn't? Oh, okay, I did not. And that's, I mean, dude's a fantastic. Think about you've got you've got Redding. you know, it lists them, but I was just off the top of my head. I know like Buddy Holly, um, the Richie Valens, the guy who, who sang La Bamba, yep. the Big Bopper, Patsy Cline, um, you know, members, multiple members of the band Leonard Skinnerd. Uh, there's a lot of them, but one one interesting thing, thing I like about Jim this Croce, is, I didn't know Jim Croce. Either. Yeah, I don't know Patsy Cline died in a plane crash either. Yep. Um, four months after he died in a plane cra- plane crash. Sitting on the dock of the bay was released and reached the top spot, oh, which is one of seriously? my one of my favorite songs. I oh, love dude. that song. And that's been covered so many well, times. And I love but, Redding. But, period. Right, I've, but, I've got albums of his. But dude, yeah. that that is that is one of the top songs of all time. I mean, in in, in my in my world, that's a fantastic. I didn't know it was. Oh, that's terrible. Four months. Oh. Four months after. I you know I was flipping through the channels the other night and uh, came across terrible uh, entertaining movie uh, Con Air. And remember at the very end when they're when they're when well no remember what we said the movie that would make the best musical and I said Connor oh yes Connor would be a great musical <laughs> no I'm just thinking of it again but remember they go uh, tea party when they they uh, they escape from the authorities and they're they're on their way and they're they're blasting Leonard Skinner yeah and the line from Steve Buscemi the the irony of it you know a bunch of idiots dancing to a uh, a song made by famous by a group that Who died, died in a plane, plane crash, crash. right this yep. is great. Yeah, anything Buscemi generally says is yeah. entertaining. All right, uh, in this day, December 10th, 2006. Ladanian Tomlinson breaks the single season touchdown record, which is pretty cool, man. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, Chargers running back uh, Tomlinson. He racks up his 29th touchdown of the year, breaking the uh, NFL record for touchdown score during a single season. Uh, Tomlinson, one of, the, uh, one, of the, one of the best in, in my lifetime watching a running back. That dude was always... Always fantastic to watch. Who I believe he is um, 
first time eligible and uh, one of the not finalists, but you know on the on yes. the first list of yeah. potential Hall of Fame nominees. In 2003, became the first player in NFL history to rush for a thousand yards and record 100 receptions yep. in the same season. Also, the seventh uh, player to run, catch, and throw for a touchdown in the same game. Uh, Chargers victory over the Oakland Raiders in uh, 2005. Uh, Tomlinson broke some ribs near the end of the 2005 season, but continued to play, finishing up with then a career high 20 touchdowns, uh, 18 rushing, two receiving. Yeah, one of the great all around, all purpose players. Uh, college player from TCU, correct? Yes. Yeah. Texas Christian, and he. Uh, at, he's been a, an MVP of the league. He's been an offensive player of the year. He's a Hall of Fame candidate. Uh, he's a you know an NFL commentator. He's a good dude. <laughs> like yeah. So this day, uh, December tenth, two thousand and six, he broke the record. Great career. Unfortunately, spent it in San Diego. One one interesting parallel: the person who um, also reached the feat of rushing for a thousand yards and catching a hundred receptions, Matt Forte. Wow. Yep. Uh, I thought this one was super cool. Um, in 1915, Ford builds its one millionth car. Wow. Um, at this point, mass manufacturing was not a thing, and all of the major manufacturers would build one car at a time. Um, one thing I thought that was really cool in this article, um, the last paragraph that says, revolutionary as it was at the time, Ford's early, early production rate was nothing compar compared to its modern day output. In 2008, even in the midst of global financial crisis, Ford produced nearly 6 million cars. But 1915, at that point, for, I mean, like what, cars had probably been out from like the late 1800s, but not exact, not mass produced. Right. One million cars. That is it's crazy. crazy, man. Built one at a time. Yep. So, uh, well done, Ford. <laughs> That's when things were great in America. That and according to Roy Moore when there was slavery. Yeah, that one. So there you go. Yeah. So there's that. Yep. All right. <laughs> On to our inspirational story of the day, which has nothing to do <laughs> with Senator Roy or Judge Roy Moore. God. Yeah, that's nothing inspiring from that idiot. <laughs> Unless uh, you hate black people, then you're fully inspired yes. by that ass. So it's fine. Okay, so uh, the our inspirational story of the week. We had a few already. Oh, this um, is a great story. Yeah, but we had, this, we had yeah. a few already bringing up, you know, the J.J. Watt winning the sports person of yeah. the year. And, oh, I uh, love that. I heard this story this, uh, this week on the radio. I love it. And uh, we were uh, talking about US-99 and raising money for St. Jude. But the title of this movie, movie? Wow. Uh, <laughs> this article is, When Dad Falls Off Ladder and Breaks Leg, Firefighters Finish Hanging the Christmas Lights. That's great. Really good story. All right. Uh, that's exactly what happened when uh, Glenn Elvenhall, El Elvin Hall, Elvin Hall, yeah, oh, Elvin, he's an elf, uh, husband and father. Not from, to be confused with Ray Sailor. Right, Ray Sailor, a, a break Ray Sailor from Colorado, uh, Glenn from Colorado, Glenn Elvin Hall. Uh, he was doing this Friday, something went terribly wrong. Glenn was hanging of Christmas lights outside his family home. He fell off his ladder onto the ground below and ended up breaking his leg and Ugh. dislocating his ankle. Ah, so the uh, the leg break could be painful enough, but, man, dislocating his ankle at the same time. Uh, rescuers with the local fire department quickly arrived on the scene to handle his injury, get him to the hospital where he could uh, be properly treated. Uh, technically, their job had ended there, but that's not where they stopped. A number of firefighters decided to stay behind after the incident and finish hanging Glenn's Christmas lights uh, since he likely would not be able to get back on the ladder. Uh, the firefighter said that putting the lights up was the right thing to do, especially for the children who were worried about their dad's injuries. Their act of kindness definitely uh, encapsulates the holiday spirit. Hopefully Glenn will be well enough again soon uh, and home to enjoy the holiday season and the Christmas lights with his family. Uh, so that is, uh, that's just outside Colorado. It doesn't say the exact city anywhere. In, and I don't remember the exact city, but it's just outside um, uh, well, in, in the state of Colorado. So he falls, breaks his leg, dislocates his ankle, and the firefighters stay behind to put the lights up. Fantastic story. Yes, and uh, if you Google that title, uh, which, again, the title of the article is When Dad Falls Off Ladder and Breaks Leg, Firefighters Finish Hanging the Christmas Lights, uh, Google that. There is also a video that tells the whole story. So um, search for that and uh, go from there. It's uh, That's cool, man. I'm glad we've had... Several things that are of an inspirational nature today in a time where there's a lot of stuff that's not. A lot of garbage going on when you go back to the first segment of this show and just recapping our political landscape in this country. Lots of garbage happening, so it's good 
uh, when good people get highlighted for the good things they do. Uh, so that is episode 17. It's called Wild Pansy. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we thank you for your continued support. Keep downloading the program. Tell your friends, family, uh, neighbors, coworkers all about the AFDE show. We love the uh, support. You can email us anytime at AFDE show. Follow on Twitter, AFDE show. And then you can get on Facebook and facebook.com slash AFDE show. We do appreciate it. We, of course, are brought to you by our good friends at Mickey Finn's, 345 North Milwaukee Avenue in beautiful downtown historic Libertyville. Uh, follow them uh, at Mickey Finn's on Twitter, 847-362-6688. Find out what's going on live entertainment every week. And there's also a fantastic food, wonderful beer. Uh, Santa's Magic is on tap right now. Get there before it's gone. And also our friends uh, at Will's Northwoods Inn, 3030 North Racine. Thank you for their uh, continued support of the program. Make sure you check them out as well. If you're having uh, holiday cocktails with friends or family, uh, check them out in the Lakeview area as well. Uh, thank you once again for listening. Episode 17, Wild Pansy. He's Ferrari. I'm a Batacola. We will see you for episode 18. Actually, uh, he's Brake Ray Sailor. And I'm, uh, Ar- what is it? What's my name? Artlaf? Artlaf? Altarf Giant <laughs> Flyer. Altarf? <laughs> Altarf. Yep, it's Ray Sailor and Altarf. We're back after uh, this week? very long break. A week. Yep, see ya. <laughs> <laughs>